Hello everyone, this is Willie, and today my friends and I are going to be doing a Star Wars tier list video of all the main movies and shows. We thought this would be really cool because we're big Star Wars fans. It's obviously going to be the most controversial video we'll probably ever make, but we thought it would be really neat to give our take on why we like certain things. We do our best to explain the reasons why we rank certain things the way we do. So hopefully if you disagree, you can at least understand uh, why we feel that way. That said, feel free to let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, we all have different values in film. So yeah, let's get into it. And I, I think episode one is a solid B tier. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, you go ahead, Aaron. I mean, give, give your give your takes. Why is it in B? <laughs> okay, well, I don't really have much to complain about. I mean, it's slow, but I personally am a huge fan of slow burn things. All Most of my favorite stories and television series and movies are slow burn, and I personally really enjoy it. There's a lot of politics, but it's really story building. And I think without a lot of the politics, you just have a crummy, like you know, generic action space movie. Right. So story-wise, or I guess story it does complement the original trilogy and, very well on how things and, start to fall. And I, I love the characters, the introduction of Obi-Wan and, and as a youngling, young, younging, not youngling, but youngin. Padawan. And yeah, and Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon is only in this movie and he is one of the most glorified and fan-favorited characters ever in Star Wars. Right. N let alone Darth Maul, who went on to do what Darth Maul did. I think the movie's just solid. Yeah. I, don't I wanna I wanna give a little bit of my breakdown really quick. Like I've been back and forth on this movie, but I I, I kinda wanna double down on what Aaron said. George Lucas had a vision when creating this movie. That's what I'm saying. He had a plan and you can totally see it start to unravel. Like does it give you um everything you want from a star wars movie probably not it ha does have slow moments it has a lot of exposition dumping a lot of dialogue that you know you need to be paying attention or else you'll you know miss things uh a lot of people didn't like the introduction of midichlorians personally that's what i, grew I forgot up with, about so that that's i don't even care <laughs> that is a big reason why a lot of people don't like the prequels especially uh, it is. I think older people yeah, which i never had an issue with up, it right. um I but really I didn't really know about it. Either. It was just kind of like there for me. Um, it's right. like you have to be born to be a Jedi. I don't know what was assumed before that. I guess like anyone could learn the Force. It's just just really hard. Well, that's now canonically confirmed is that you can learn to use the Force. Ahsoka canonically confirmed that. So you don't need right. Metaclorians. It still has to do with well, Metaclorians, I think. But I think there's another way to get it. Yeah, there. you have to be born with Metaclorians, I believe, to wield yeah. the Force. Well, also, here's the thing. Star Wars is kind of fucked up canon canonically right now. Yeah, Disney's we don't really unraveling know what some is things. So yeah, they're changing the way things work. Not, you have to be born with it. Like something, you know, calls from above to to give the force to these people that are like chosen type shit. You know, it's kind of cool. But yeah, it works. To go on, uh, one of the most iconic villains of all time. Sure, I would love. I would have loved to see more of him too, just like anybody else. But. You know, we do we do later on, and that's good. And I honestly think he left his mark on this movie. Like, he was incredible. Also, Qui-Gon, fantastic performance by Liam Neeson. Qui-Gon's one of my all-time favorite Jedis, and I'm pretty sure I speak for William and Aaron when I say that, too. Yeah, you um, speak for, for everybody. <laughs> Everyone yeah, likes Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon's Qui -Gon's a legend. I'd like to Young add... Obi-Wan is good. Introduces um, Darth Maul, which becomes one of the most interesting and influential characters in a lot of the other future right. uh shows or film also uh, I, some of the best music and some of the best fighting sequences oh my god i was specifically one saying, when i said i'd like to add i was gonna say the compositional aspect was phenomenal like yeah that's what you look for in music or in movies with music is for music to enhance what's going on you know not to make it just not just to be there to make it less boring but to be there to make it more beautiful do you know what i mean yeah, it, that and the duel of the fates with the fight at the end. Uh, I do wish we would see more um, choreography like that in Star Wars films. I feel like nowadays mm -hmm. they just really don't give like they don't care yeah. at all about making right. the fight scenes look good. It's something we'll see in the prequels and even the original trilogy is not that bad. It, somehow it's gotten a lot worse and I guess they just don't really care to train actors to. Uh, right. Yeah sword fight and look like they're actually shooting the gun right but yeah i don't really understand all effects people are that, this. that hate on like the heavily choreographed lightsaber fights of the pre prequels i think it adds 
so people much. People hate on it. To the skill of the Jedi and the fact that you can literally see them using the Force to predict each other's movements. It's like a dance, right? It's yeah. Like, it's 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 incredible to watch, and I I don't like uh, the new kind of fighting style where it kind of just feels very boring. Overall, uh, I'll give a little bit of my takes. We've been on this for a while, so I'll just keep yeah. it quick. Um, the reason why it's probably not A tier is, um, one, it is a little slow, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It is, I would say, A tier as far as adding to the Star Wars universe. Uh, obviously, the ending with the fighting, Agreed. Duel of the Fates duel, really good. It's very exciting. Um, mm -hmm. It establishes good lore. Uh, also, two, I want to ask you guys this, because actually been, I've, I've watched the movie like a dozen, dozen times or more, but it has been a while since the last time I've watched it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember any there being any bad dialogue. I think that was more Star Wars two and three. This yeah, because we don't right. have a lot of Anakin talking Star Wars in this. Yeah, um, specifically Star Wars two. I agree. The Star thing Wars about this movie cool. is there's just a lot of expedition. Ex, ex, sorry, exposition. Yeah. exposition dumping. There's a lot of politics. There's a lot of like world building yeah. um, that people kind of like don't really like. Which I and a movie on its but... own, it would be uh, probably really boring because you don't know what the heck you're watching. Yeah, which is another reason yeah, why it's going to go and beat or not A tier. That right. and uh, we can't forget about Jar Jar Binks. Right. I personally um, don't mind him. I he didn't either. Kind of as I've gotten older, it. yeah, as I've gotten yeah. older, I start to really understand a lot more, which also affects it a little bit. Same I still exact personally don't mind him. thing for me is like when I was a kid, Jar Jar was cool. But now that I grow up and watch this movie, it's like that's just kind of like. That's like potty humor type shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it's he going to really be. feel like he belongs. I almost want to put it in A, but it's going to be. I know things. there's so many things that make me want to put it in A. Like, I would love to put this movie in A, but there's a couple things, like you said, William, that just like bring it down that one little peg. I think it's going to maintain the top of B tier for me. So, um, <clears throat> are we going to move on? Yes. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to rate this show real quick i forgot the name but with ahsoka and count yeah. dooku the clone wars oh, yeah, show right here, guys i didn't finish all of it but i finished most of it um i'm just going to give a quick review of it i like that it goes into ahsoka's background and i also like that it goes into count dooku's background and kind of humanizes mm -hmm. him um i do find count dooku to be one of the most interesting characters in star wars because he's not necessarily a bad guy he just just like anakin just like qui-gon he knew that the Jedi were becoming corrupt and he just right. went around more uh, unethical ways of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. um, overall, I'm just going to throw it in the C tier. I think it's pretty good. Solid. If I watch it again, I might have put it higher, but it's been a while. And I, like I said, I didn't finish all of it. I need to go back and finish it. So I think C tier is a good right. place to throw it. That's fair enough. Seems Alrighty. like a nice, reasonable place to put it for now. Episode so, two. Episode two. F. Episode two <laughs> is certainly something. F, hold on. Buddy. Episode two has some of the coolest Star Wars <laughs> ideas that I've yeah, ever seen. I agree. It also has some of the ideas. worst CGI and some of the worst dialogue I've seen. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, and some weird action sequences like going part, through the factory. Yes. Yes. My favorite part of the second movie is uh, Obi-Wan on Kamino. That shit is so cool. That yes. was my favorite shit as a kid, too. I loved that scene and that kind of like really cool idea. And it was done pretty well, but then the next scene It's definitely the most memorable some of the most memorable. The for next me too. scene, Anakin and yeah. Padme are caressing each other's body at a random <laughs> field in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like Yeah. I don't like sand. I don't, I don't like know why sand. I said that with a British accent. Anyways, but yeah, uh Anakin is probably my him he's yeah. probably my favorite character of all time, just being a kid. Growing oh. up, loving Hayden Christensen and Anakin. Um, so, as a kid, I loved this movie. I loved seeing Anakin grown up. I loved, like, the hot-headed Anakin character. And I, like, turn to the dark side and stuff. But these are all things that you like when you're a kid. But you start to mm -hmm. notice little things that just, <laughs> throw just you don't off. really age too well when you're... Yeah, you, know, you get older. Kind of throw you off. You don't yeah. realize, um, like, the... You get older is right. Like when I was young, when I watched it, I didn't remember any of the romantic scenes um, oh my yes. or even the weird dialogue. Your brain doesn't really process any of that. Then you get older and you watch exactly. it again. And you're like, oh, this is why yeah. people don't yeah. like it. The the exactly. romance, all the romance between Anakin and Padme is very cringe. Um, a yeah. lot of the dialogue is pretty bad. Yeah. And the movie is actually really boring through most of it toward the end. I guess toward as a kid, 
uh, watching it, you really only like I really only remembered the Camino scenes and like the end, the the fight scene with Dooku. Yeah. Every um, time I rewatch this movie, I always expect it to be more exciting than it is, and it always just kind of leaves me feeling like that empty. was it. Yeah, like, I kind of thought there was happened. gonna there was more to, in this movie, like because I have such a like positive experience with it as a kid. Um, the music so too. I go back to it. I'm just a little disappointed. I remember when like they revealed the clone troopers Close with Obi Wan, and then it, it mm. shows all the clone troopers marching with the music. Like, it's all super cool, super epic, super yeah, dramatic. Yeah. Super it cool. sets up I the agree. the lore too on how the Jedi got the clone mm. army, and I love right. how it sets mm-hmm. up Jango Fett, um, one of yeah, my favorite I, characters. Uh, and I especially when I was younger, he's not as high anymore, but he's still one of my favorites. Right. I agree. I really like how they set up Jango Fett and even Boba Fett. I like that. Well, yeah, it was neat to see young Boba. Seeing that Boba was, cool. was like a clone yeah. of Jango was really cool. I think that's a really, um, really cool thing they did. Again, some of the positives like George Lucas had a vision, right? He had this idea of this army that was going to fall into the hands of the Jedi, but it was you know, all part of this grand scheme. Um, Mm -hmm. He's setting up a masterful, masterful storyline that will connect with his original trilogy that these are the things that I love about this movie. I love, like Aaron said, the Kaminoans, the scene with Obi-Wan. I also love being able to see Obi-Wan's, this is technically his backstory, right? (laughs) So I love that. Yeah, that's right. Um, He's definitely a highlight of this movie. Yeah, he's probably the best world building. The world building is very nice. Yeah, it's but, very nice. Very but as a movie, another by negative itself, too. Yeah, go ahead, Ali. Finish. It's just the the uh, the fighting, bro. Fighting. Negative? Specifically, the fighting at the end. Yeah. Um. Like, oh yeah, we'll go right, and rewatch. Wasn't if you guys go fight? and rewatch the fight with Count Dooku and Anakin, it's like all these super close up shots of their face. Like you don't That's even exactly see the core right. gra- graphing. And it's not like, much of a fight at all. Different. Dooku, they tried something different and it just didn't work as well. I do want to bring up something. I think also, though, maybe part of the reason like that it's like that is mm-hmm. because it wasn't really a fight. Dooku kind of dominated both of them. Maybe that's part of the reason. That, that, it's not really true. an excuse, I guess, but maybe that's what he was trying to say. He was like, yeah, he beats them I both super easily. And it's not until the Clone it, they, Wars when they, they can, can actually have. hold their own against him. <laughs> I'm just specifically talking about the camera angles and like the. the That's cor- what I'm saying. Like, like, right. I don't know what George Lucas was doing, but he 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 changed he some things up from the Phantom Menace. Could have just showed us. It didn't work. Could have just shown There's, butts instead of show us Dooku <laughs> do some really in. weird looks into the camera and. Vice versa with Anakin. And yeah, you're right. Actually, I it. remember some of that. Now. Yeah, I, I challenge you guys to go. Right now, after you watch this video, go look up. Of course, after the video, please. Um, uh, Anakin versus Anakin and Obi Wan versus Dooku, and and you'll know what I'm talking about. Like it is, it is weird. But um, so, guys, how do you feel? How do you feel about C tier? Like right smack dab in the middle. I, I I'm putting it in D. I think it's a little bit worse D? than being in the middle. Yeah. I yeah. Think it's just a little movie, bit worse. Movie wise, it's really not good. I just yeah. My nostalgia connection and the and the world building make me want to put it in C. I'm also too. I'm just remembering scenes where, like, remember when, like Padme was running through the factory and stuff. Yeah. Like it was like a video mm-hmm. game simulation. It was all pretty bad. Um, yeah, CGI is really bad. And I can't. I there, was scene, there was that one scene. There was that one scene where Anakin, right. um, killed those Tuscan Raiders. Very well done. Beautiful <laughs> yeah. scene too. On Honestly, the spear. I, I really do like that. So he's got the, the desert in the background, like. Another reason yeah. why I'm putting it in D2 is I have a comparison. I put the Ahsoka and like Count Dooku Clone Wars thing in there. That's way better than this movie. So I, okay. I, I can't I can't put it with that. So it has to go in D tier for me. That's fair. Totally fair. Totally get that. Um, um, personally, I think I'm going to leave it in C for now. I might come back to it later. But the more yeah. I think about it, the more there are some positives. Like I do like the action scene at the beginning, the assassination, the assassination attempt and like the hot headed Anakin are positives but there's lots of things that bring it down i might go back i might go to d i'll let you guys know if i do later but i'm gonna plop it in c tier for now yeah i think i'm gonna leave it in c tier for now too yeah i think i'll end up putting it in low c tier by the time we're done with this list too i'll rearrange all my c's and throw it at the lower end of c tier but for now i think c is good all righty so on. the clone wars movie clone wars movie that's right uh i don't know i think um, it's a d tier 
I don't. I agree. I think it's a D tier. I think it's a C tier. Honestly, a C tier. Uh, yeah. I I liked it. Like it's not. I haven't bad. seen it since like for like fucking five six years. I love it, like, especially when I was young. I think it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. That shit was gas. I don't really know why people hate on it. Like, it you know why, William? I'm not really sure. I, I don't the, the animation. I, I think it's the animation. I think people were hating on the animation. Okay. I don't know why I was saying D tier. I remember watching this movie like over and over and over and over again. Like I think it's better game? than the Attack of the Clones. I think. So we're kind yeah, of working off a different scale here, um, because I, I'm putting it with Attack of the Clones. Yeah, that's true. I'm which I have that in D. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I have it with Attack of the Clones in C as well. I also think it's weird thing of I should like move Phantom Menace to A, this Clone Wars to B, and then like these to I C. I feel like, yeah. I feel like moving Phantom Menace to A as well. I almost feel like it's an A worthy, but I wanna I'll keep it the same for now. Yeah, we'll kind of go over it a little bit later, maybe yeah. after we have a This will move around as we start uh throwing more in. Exactly. But yeah, no, from from what I remember this from this movie, it was a good introduction to Ahsoka. It was kind of um like it was just a fun, exciting ride. Like and didn't don't I we have get no Asajj Ventress with it, in really. this as well? We do. We get the introduction yeah, of a yeah. lot of new, very good Rex. characters. Captain Rex, Ahsoka, oh, Rex, Ventress. Yeah, that's right. Um Dude, it sets honestly, up for the Clone Wars TV show. Um it's yeah. just it's real like there's not much of a story as a thing. Like it's it's all action and shooting right. and laser swords, which I think is awesome. It's lots of fun. But right. story wise, there's not a lot of takeaway from it. Lore wise, yeah, there's some I take mean, away from it. So that's why I'm very happy putting it with uh, attack on the clones in the d tier like yeah. if you think about the story for this it was anakin gets a padawan uh let's go see main Jabba thing the hut's little baby is developing their relationship anakin with yeah. Ahsoka. Jo- they go and save Jabba the hut's little baby asav venture asav asaj ventures is there <laughs> and then they get that ship that anakin and ahsoka use throughout the clone wars that's fucking it yeah there's not a so, whole lot to the movie yeah it, it's it was made for kids it was uh you know it was fun and sure as fuck but it's not necessarily too love it. <laughs> that's agreed um i, I saw this in theaters oh really yeah <laughs> dude aaron and i aaron and i owned the dvd version so we would just like put it on every week i, I, I literally <laughs> watched it so much god yeah. I, I know we got it at hollywood video when they were going out of business if you know you know you know, you know <laughs> but, video um, baby I'm gonna smack it or block like you said, William. Um, next to episode two, yeah. which for me is in next... C tier, middle of the pack. I Solid agree. action action movie, good little setup middle to the Clone Wars. Dark. Nothing really going on story wise to write home about. Um, but a nice little addition to the Star yeah. Wars for kids. I I agree. Alrighty, it's a very um, it's a very different reason why why being in C in a C tier than Attack of the Clones is in C tier, but <laughs> yeah. Regardless, they're both here. Um, do we want to do Star Wars three first and do the Clone Wars, or do the Clone Wars TV show then do Star Wars three? Uh, uh, Clone Wars TV show. It's kind of like a one two punch. So let's just I guess start with the Clone Wars. Yeah. Okay. I think they're both going to the same spot, in my opinion. It's some of the I okay. Also, too, before I say this. The more I'm looking at this, I kind of want to move everything up in my list. I kind of want to move Phantom Menace to A. Now that I'm thinking about it, I, I think I could do it. If, if a. everything feels a little bit too low, uh, I could agree with Phantom yeah. Menace at A. I could also be fine and with I, it being at B. Just for me, because uh, Episode Two and Clone Wars, I think are C tier. They're, they're kind of like average. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I'd like to say the last time I watched Phantom Menace, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. So I think I'm gonna move it up to A. Like I, I don't have any complaints with it really. It's it was slow, but I like the slow. I like really so much too good, much about good it. Good world building to like yeah. hey, like yeah. it's actually I'm, pretty decent. I'm throwing it in a. An exciting climax and a perfect setup to. And Jar Jar really isn't that Wars. bad. People hate on him no. way too much. I 100 yeah. percent agree. I don't really have a problem with him. Like, I just don't like above. seeing like. You know what I mean? Like, there's a couple of them put an S tier. I'm like, there's it's too far away from episode one. Episode one really isn't that bad. Right. Um, but okay, okay. So, so Clone Wars. I think that leads um, us right into yeah. our first S tier. Yeah, I was going to say I think the Clone Wars is S tier worthy. Think it's S. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? I'd agree. I uh, I would I think I'd put, put it, it in I'd... S or A, specifically 
the defining factor for me is just literally just the filler episodes that would make yeah. it into an A. But really, so, most shows have that. So what I was gonna say is, I think I'm gonna throw it an S, but it's definitely gonna be below our next S. Hint, hint. The next on our list. <laughs> yeah. You know so, I mean? so um, I'll give my reason on why I think it should be. Oh, do you want to finish yours? Yeah. I I just you know it's some of the best content we have in Star Wars, uh, but it's not perfect. Um, the show really. discovers itself over time. It starts out. Yeah, it discovers itself over sure. time. Pretty mediocre, and but then gets even really in good. even in the seventh season, there's those episodes in the middle that just kind of felt like they didn't belong whatsoever. So, oh yeah, those were extra episodes made by Disney too in season seven. Yeah, yeah. they could have had the Darth Maul thing. There was a couple things that could have been. Yeah, in there. they could have had the Darth Maul but thing. Oh, that would have been so cool. They How really cool felt like. Doing the most boring Darth lame thing they could have added. Kidnaps Count Dooku <laughs> mm. and Grievous and forces Palpatine to come save them. Like, yeah. Why can not we have seen that? Fuck. Because because that's why everyone I'm wants thinking... to see those uh ladies, those very kind ladies help out Ahsoka, bro. That's why yeah. nobody <laughs> wants to see that. That's what I'm saying. Either <laughs> lower S tier or the probably the top of the line on A tier. Only because it's not like perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. And but so, let's see when let's see what you have to say. You yeah, may sway me. You may very yeah, well So me. the reason why I want an S tier, um, obviously there are those problems where like it's up and down, but I'm kind of expecting that from a TV show. I'm kind of looking at the core episodes that really add to um like if you looked up a watch guide, like what are the episodes you'd watch in a watch guide? Right. Um the Clone Wars basically kind of fixes the issues with the prequels. So I think it deserves a lot of credit there. Uh before yeah, the Clone course. Wars, you don't really like Anakin, even in Star Wars three. Uh right. He goes to the dark side, turns Darth Vader, and you're not really surprised. Like, yeah, he was a freaking weirdo. The, all the red flags were there. Why didn't anyone pick this right. up? The Anakin from the Clone Wars is very different. It fixes his personality. Um, he is way he more charismatic. So way more, yeah, he's given depth. He's charismatic. He's a good leader. He loves mm-hmm. saving people. Um, and it also kind of sh- gives more time that I guess George didn't have in the movies to kind of show the fall of Anakin. This is very, very slow um in the lore in the story where anakin starts to turn to the dark side uh you become much more attached to anakin also to adds great characters like ahsoka captain rex um adds way more to the lore in general uh on how the jedi fell but overall i i think it just adds to the emotion a lot more like if you watch star wars in order star wars one star wars two and then watch the clone wars at least the main episodes, then Star Wars 3. Star Wars 3 is so much more emotional. Yeah. Um, the fight between Anakin and Obi-Wan is so much more emotional because you, you, you've you seen their their long relationship with right. uh, through the Clone Wars, and the fall is just so much more dramatic. And even in Star mm-hmm. Wars, uh, the original trilogy, you're looking at Darth Vader, you're like, oh my God, that is Anakin Skywalker from the Clone yeah. Wars. That's the man who like used to sacrifice his life to save people. He had a paddle one. He did everything he could he thought was good, but he just got turned because uh, the Jedi were just too corrupt and he just didn't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. It really makes the Star Wars stories so much better um, if you watch this. Like if you watch, I haven't watched too much Star Wars, you should watch Clones with it because it makes it such a better story overall. Yes. And it even makes the redemption with Luke and his son so much more meaningful because you're thinking of that Anakin from the Clone Wars. That's why I think it should be an S tier because I think it really just yeah. fixes the Star Wars universe, uh, like makes it mm-hmm. so much better, and really makes you want to like Anakin a lot more. And that's yeah. my reason for right. my, my main give, reason for putting it in S tier. I could agree give with a couple that. of my thoughts on it really quick now, mm. William. I, I I totally agree mm-hmm. with that. Um, it's pretty much everything I was gonna say. It thickens the you know, it it, it thickens the stew. You know, like it 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 makes all of these other movies that have so much time in between them hit mm-hmm. that much more because you because you get to see the relationship that's only referenced in Revenge of the Sith between Anakin and Obi-Wan. You get to see them that you know having this sort of brotherhood. Um you get to see Anakin, like you said, William, just have this rich sort of relationship with uh Ahsoka, which you've come to find out is a massive, massive reason why he turns to the dark side 
And in your head, yeah, when she leaves, everything <clears throat> in Revenge of the Sith just makes, you know, it clicks together so perfectly. Yeah. So, if anything, I think that in and of itself belongs in S tier. Sure, there's stuff in the show that does most definitely does not belong in S tier. There's yeah, there's filler. Like we said filler. There's some arcs uh-huh. that are just you know, all right. Meh. But as a like kid, like R two D two and C three pre arc. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I think I skipped that. Fuck that. <laughs> that was some of the worst shit I've had to watch. <laughs> but no man, Commander Gregor. It. It's worth it because know. of Commander Gregor. Okay, that's actually true. Gregor. But uh, but no, I think bare bare bones. Like at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. Clone Wars is it, it 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 strengthens the rest of the series so much to where you need to give it a certain amount of credit. Star Wars just really isn't the same without the Clone Wars, especially the prequels. Correct. Of course. Yeah, Plus, there's so much totally content agree. there. If you really yeah. want to see some Star Wars prequel stuff, you just be like, ah, oh, just go watch a few episodes of the Clone Wars. Like, not to mention Obi Wan has some of the freaking Obi Wan has some. Oh my of the god! I love the Obi Wan. Amazing and... <laughs> growth and the most amazing action sequences and the so does Darth Maul. Heroic, like hero, heroism. Like Obi Wan is a straight fucking hero. Every time show. I think of Obi Wan from the Clone Wars, my mind directly just goes straight. to... That's another thing too. Him fighting Savage and Darth Maul at the same. That's time a perfect and, and defeating them both. Like. It makes you like Obi-Wan more. It makes you well. really yeah. like Obi-Wan more. Not to mention Obi-Wan's character development with... Oh, God, what was her name? The Duchess Sartine. The Duchess Satine, bro. It shows all... Like, it adds more that, loss that Obi-Wan went through. I Obi-Wan love, literally lost yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it shows you the inverse of Anakin. Like, yeah. Obi-Wan lost just as much as Anakin, and he stood true. And, you know, Anakin did not. Like, it shows you the inverse yeah of what the jedi order is capable of that's one thing that we definitely need to bring up is like the show isn't just about anakin like there's so much depth going on there's so much like story building going on here i was gonna say so many a lot of great characters characters. introduced and i know william you were about to say um darth maul's reintroduced which is a great great idea a character that has so much uh had so much potential is brought back and i think they do a great job with him in the show some of people's favorite characters ever are first introduced in this show and only in this show. Plo mm-hmm. Koon, Kid Fisto, like for me, Captain uh, Rex. Whoever's favorite character favorite is Plo Captain Koon Rex. Is and Kid. Fisto. People <laughs> love Plo Koon, bro. I do. Plo I Koon's love Plo Koon, but he's not my fan <laughs> favorite character. No, not even in the slightest. But he's a fan <laughs> favorite. I mean, Cad Bane too. Yeah, the, it, like, some of the best characters in the Star Wars universe have been introduced in the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People love Kaplo Koon, bro. And this Not was a time, too, when uh, George Lucas was kind of still in charge of Star Wars. Like, he was right. trying to fix a lot of things in here, and he did it. Mm-hmm. Him and his, you know Dave Filoni did a beautiful job. Yeah, also, uh, side note, I'm actually going to move everything back down to how I had it. I like have, seeing the gap between Episode 1 and Clone Wars right there. It looks better now. I'm going to put uh, I think Phantom Menace and B and the other two in C. So. I might have some original trilogies in A tier, and I don't think they... Are they match with episode one as well? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I may put Phantom Menace in B, but mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna keep it in A. And if I have to, I'll just put it lower A. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, yeah. So take on the Clone um, Wars. Let us know what you think in the comments below. <laughs> yeah. Next one, Star too. Wars three. This is my favorite content Star Wars has ever had. This is S tier for me. I know it's the same for Aaron. I'm pretty sure it's the same for you too, William. It is. Um, yeah. This is. This is perfect example of you know everything george lucas wanted was leading up to with this series it hits with an emotional punch the acting is incredible hayden christensen takes two steps up from the previous movie ewan mcgregor stays true he does a whole great job oh my god you and uh just the emotion is there the music is there the action is there it's way Um, faster paced way faster mcgregor is one of my favorite actors. I love his performances and just movies in general. So mm-hmm. for him to play my favorite character like that so diligently, wonderful. And not to mention the compositional value as well is, you know, rivals that of every other Star Wars movie and past that. It's probably the most impressive compositional piece uh, yeah. for, for Star Wars movies or movies in general. Like, it is incredible the way that it's not only built but placed in in the movie. It's just masterful. 
oh, like the 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 music that plays during Obi Wan and Anakin's duel is like rivals that of Duel of the Fates for me. Like I love that that composition so much. It's so like, gut wrenching and like full of the emotion that is just surrounding those two characters in that moment. And I think it just makes that fight what it is for so many people without them, you know, truly acknowledging it. I think that the music really pushes it that extra like 10 miles. Um, Agreed for sure. John Williams is a legend. William, do you have anything that you would like to add to this? Uh, it's all the same stuff, really. Um, the choreography too, just as good. Like I said, I wish we would, I wish, mm -hmm. Uh, which you would go back to putting effort into like teaching uh, actors like if there's a fight scene you know teach them to have like have an yeah. awesome yeah. scene between um, like lightsabers like why put that aside it's something that makes Star Wars Star Wars and this well, has yeah, you that guys... fight looks beautiful it's great just, yeah just wait till you watch Dune yeah well Dune is an exception uh, like everything else they're kind of like slacking <laughs> right that's um, true like um, I complained I, about I this and add to... go ahead no go ahead Wayne uh um, you can go ahead. It wasn't. It wasn't important. Oh. Um. Yeah. I. I. I fucking. I forgot. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> no, it's a great I, movie. I um, say, um. The fall of the Jedi Order and the fall of the Republic. I think was Order sixty six. Order sixty six was done so well. And yeah. again, it makes me bring up the compositions. Like that music that plays. Like it get, puts goosebumps yeah, on your order skin. 66. Every 66. single time. It's really good. It's incredible. It shows you oh, know all the different I, Jedi's I, being murdered. And, oh. I want to address a couple things that people complain about really quick in this movie. Uh, one being when Darth Vader says "No, shut the fuck up!" Like, come on, it doesn't matter. People bro. complain about that. Take, Wait, hold it's on. Not people complain about away. that. <laughs> yeah, people think it's cringe. Like, I've never thought about that once. I've never thought about that being cringe. I, me neither. See, I've never. See, see, wow. that's. That's because it's not cringe, guys. It's never crossed my mind once that that. You know was why cringe. it's cool? What? People say it's like cringe because it's like, what the hell? Like Darth Vader would never do that. Like what? He well, he doesn't show emotion like quite... that. He's not quite. But here, he's I not Darth Vader say fully yet. Some things. <laughs> that's like the release that Anakin. That's the that's Anakin dying. You know, like that. No, is like that's Anakin releasing his last bit of himself and after that is Darth Vader. Also, that's a cringe thing to, to to diss this movie about. Another thing is people say that Anakin's turn to the dark side was a little too quick in that room. Um, Watch the Clone Wars. Well, we have the Clone Wars. I, I think after we've talked about the Clone Wars, yeah. um, I think we can all make the connection now that Anakin yeah. has been wish... wavering, and he's been on this path for a Since while the now. Twins. So, Since so the his, Twins. Since the Twins. So his fall is really, he's already really, you know, he's moments away from getting, going down that path mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of this movie. Um, whereas without the Clone Wars, you probably wouldn't know that, which is a valid complaint otherwise. But regardless, this movie does it very well. And, um, every time I watch this movie, I, I, you know, feel the same emotions as I did when I was a kid. So, yeah, the only other complaint that may be a little justified is still some of the dialogue between Anakin and Padme are a little weird, but it's very, it's not nearly as bad as episode two. No, um, it's definitely, and it's not bad enough for me to want to bring it down to a tier. It's still S tier. Yeah. Like it's not that relevant to me. Um, like I said, Hayden Christensen really stepped up his game in this movie. He, yeah, he carried this, this character to a place where, you know, you, it's believable this, this fall and this emotion that he's feeling. Yeah, people hated on him too much. It's really cool, actually, recently, just seeing him come back. He seems like his spark yeah. for being Anakin has kind of been relit. Yeah, it's awesome. It's kind of neat. That's some of, the, some of the best things in Star Wars right now is just seeing that Hayden's getting a good treatment, you know, kind of the treatment that I've felt like he always deserved. Yeah. If you yeah, want to... Yeah, I was just ready to say, yeah. if you want to learn more, because Anakin is a weird character people wrap their head around, especially people that aren't really like hard Star Wars fans uh, on the surface. It's kind of People who aren't fans of like good stories and good character development that takes place over a long period of time won't understand him. Right. I was going to say, you could go so watch Star Wars are. Theory has made some great videos kind of explaining oh, yeah. why 
Um, Anakin is a really cool and good character. Uh, he explains it really well. I recommend going and watching those. Um, Some again, people all go ahead. All they really consume is junk food television, where the extent of their character development is Tony Stark. Which don't get me wrong, it's <laughs> good, but it's not. It's like bore. It's basic level, very very basic level character development. He goes. Yeah, it's from, it's he, long term storytelling. Very very long. I mean, storytelling. I don't know. That's a conversation for a different day. But I think I think the tan- handling of Tony Stark is just is pretty amazing. But I also think, um, you know, it's kind of oversaturated these days. Anyway, let's not get too far off topic. Yeah, this is something I want to tell people too. Um, like, Star Wars may not be the best told story, like in film. Like the story itself is extremely good, but it's not always told the best. And I think that's what creates a lot of divide too between these movies. Is uh, there's people that are really into the lore and they follow the story off screen, and they're like, "Oh, this is an amazing story," but on screen, it's not always told the best. Which is a big reason why I also recommend people. You should watch Clone Wars with it because you probably want to appreciate the story a lot more. I'd like right. to formally recall what I said about Tony Stark upon <laughs> thinking about that further. I mean, that is probably... It's fine. So, you were looking for a comparison so, yeah. and an example. It's okay. I was looking for yeah. a comparison yeah. and I chose Marvel even though Tony Stark's character development is pretty... It's pretty Who has uh, bad character genius. development? Marvel. Yeah, yeah Tony look. Stark's character development is kind of genius the more I think about Civil War... In yeah, it's pretty incredible but anyways that's a we'll make a video on that guys we will definitely do an mcu ranking for sure yeah at least until the wow end of phase the more i think about it, it that is pretty incredible i got yeah, a lot of got things to rewatch if we're going to do that i gotta refresh my memory in this anyway anyways, uh, let's get going on this so next so, is solo Obi-Wan, uh right? well we actually have a few we have we have a few before star wars 4 we have i know rogue one's last in the list because it happens like yes. it ends right before star wars 4 but i have bad batch on my list, right. um, I have Star Wars Rebels. I have Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, hey, William, how much of Bad Batch have you seen? I've, only I've seen, seen season, season one. Oh, me too. I, I was going to put it. Up. I was going to rate it real quick. Okay. Yeah, just talk about it for a second, guys. Both sure. of you guys who have seen season one. I haven't seen season one, so I'll just. Do you want to go first, Aaron? Um, Do you have anything special to say about it? No, it was forgettable, and I don't really like the decision <laughs> they made. They had this like huge hype. For Omega to be some really cool clone, like they had this like really deep, really potent um, hint, like oh, is she force sensitive? Is she gonna be the first force sensitive clone? She's also a woman. Is that why she's part of the Bad Batch? No, she's part of the Bad Batch because she's just a female clone. That's it. That is it. That's her only ability. Yeah. It, so it was boring and forgettable. I'm putting it in D tier. The character development for um, Omega definitely wasn't the best. Um, it was okay. Uh, I remember the show more for the Bad Batch characters. They I were thought cool. they were very cool, very interesting. I thought they were a very cool addition. I agree. I like. but I, Go ahead. I was just going to say, but they didn't focus on those characters as much. Although I do like the main character, Hunter, or whatever his name is. He's a very cool clone. He's probably my favorite clone. Um him and you know whatever i just think that they should have focused on the bad batch more so than omega that was kind of just a little yeah so forced very forced and it felt like her her potential was very high and met very little but i will say i do like what they did with the clone the one clones chip activating and the others not and he was like evil and stuff. I think that was cool. So I'm going to put it in high D. Yeah. So what I don't like is too much on Omega. Um, like Aaron said, I like the dynamic between clone troopers. I like the struggle uh, between the chip and what they go into. Mm-hmm. It kind of goes into mm-hmm. the fall of Kamino as well, which is kind of cool lore wise. But yeah, it was kind of forced. There was, I guess, uh, it wasn't the best storytelling. Um, wrap this up pretty because I know Gabe hasn't seen this. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Something that really killed it, I might have put it in C tier. Although a lot of it's just kind of fighting and shooting, and a kind of same reason why Clone Wars is in D tier, just uh, the movie, just because it's, it's a lot. It's fun to watch. There's a lot of fighting and it's it's cool, um, but there's not much to take away from it. Also, too, I do not like the way it ends. It really falls off season one anyway. Yeah, I remember being boring. very disappointed by like the last two episodes because they were kind of slow. It was boring. 
it didn't really it didn't yeah, really I, I, hit with anything so that's why i'm putting every it in disney D-tier. show every disney i'm show. tired of this let's <laughs> yeah. move on let's move on all right so it's going let's in go D- to solo yeah it's high d low c for me because only because phantom menace is in c, not phantom menace attack of the clones is in c so okay i have not seen solo um when i'm going to leave that to solo? you guys i will um, quickly give my thoughts aaron have you seen it you have. yeah i've seen yeah. it like two right. or three times here let me let me just give give my thoughts um solo was not the worst it was certainly not the best it was very forgettable i never think mm. about this movie mm. whenever i think of, when i think about han solo i think about harrison ford and i think about the original trilogy it doesn't really have anything that irks me too much the weird relationship with the robot and lando was just that uh, weird uh, um weird uh there was some interesting things with darth maul at the end and the crime syndicate but literally went nowhere i'm gonna slap this in d call it good yeah it wasn't horrible it was a fun little little ride but probably the most forgettable thing on this entire list for me it 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 was um see ya i was waiting for that yeah that whole (laughs) that entire description of that movie you sounded like charlie every descriptive word you used was charlie or watching a lot of Charlie you're like <laughs> you're like that's what you're doing uh, you're like the weird relationship between lando and the robot was just that weird <laughs> charlie thing to say i guess that's what i'm saying i was like what the fuck but i would have to agree it was forgettable it was weird but i will say i didn't really dislike after the second watch i didn't dislike the actor who played Han, what was his name? He he didn't he didn't do a bad job. But... I think he did a pretty decent job at portraying Han. There's as... just no point in this movie existing. So I'm just I think he did a decent job portraying Han in terms of as good as it gets without being Harrison Ford, and that's not very good. <laughs> but he did fine, and I would have to say the same about Lando in Gambino. Yeah. Um, I agree. But yeah, forgettable. I agree. D tier. Although it, it is fun, yeah, yeah it's a I, fun think, movie. That, I think I think Disney after. Yeah. I think this is when Disney learned people don't watch Star Wars just because it's Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, you actually have to make like, a rib- good story. No one no. really like it. Didn't it didn't um, profit in box office? Also, um, I would like to say the trailer for this mm-hmm. movie didn't come out until like a month or two before the movie came out. So nobody yeah, was, there was anticipating like, it. And also, it came, this movie came out like. Three or four months after the Last Jedi, which was a super divisive Star Wars film, so no yeah, one was people really were heated it. on that. Like, yeah, Solo. Yeah, I remember when Solo came out, and I was like, I had no interest of going and watching that at the time. Yeah, I was so like burnt out and bored. And sure enough, I heard Solo was just kind of mediocre. It was like okay, but it was kind of boring. All right, yeah, you're let's not go really on to Obi Wan. Oh man, Obi Wan. Oh, before we um, do Obi Wan, I do have Star Wars Rebels on my list. Yeah, go um, ahead. And did you guys watch that? Thoughts on that. I I've didn't seen... watch it, but I know the iconic moments and yeah. some good things. Yeah, but, so yeah. I'll give a, awesome my, my, my quick little hot take on it. Everything not about the main character, I think, is good. Um, for the most part, especially in the beginning. Uh, I love the stuff with Ahsoka, um, with Darth Vader. It sets up some good lore. It, it has Thrawn in it. Um, right. Obviously, it can't live. Up, it doesn't live the Clone Wars because it, it is more made for kids. Um, although I guess you could say Clone Wars was too, and it matured with the audience. But right. uh, it has more black and white storytelling. Um, like they're always like stormtroopers are not a threat. They're always taking out stormtroopers and putting on their armor. It's like a continuous thing that they always do, um, and it, it gets old. Uh, so kind of each episode, filler episodes will follow the same format. Um, so I'm gonna throw it in C tier because I, I I like the the Soka and Darth Vader stuff. Darth Vader, right. the the fight between Darth Vader and um, Obi Wan, I think was great. A great way. Darth Maul. I mean, uh, Darth Maul and Obi Wan. Oh, and Obi Wan. Okay. Was great. Uh, a lot of people hate on the fight because it wasn't um a fight. as cinematic, but uh, there was so much meaning in the fight. Uh, Obi-Wan starts out with his default stance. Um, like, if you don't know about it, Obi-Wan starts out with his default stance. Darth Maul has a um, uh, a defensive stance. But then Darth Maul just goes back to his old ways and gets more aggressive. And Obi-Wan learns from this and switches to a more uh, defensive stance and defeats... Uh, uh, well, 
Darth Maul tries to take out Obi-Wan the same way he does Qui-Gon with the headbutt of the centerpiece right. of his lightsaber, but Obi-Wan sees that coming and cuts it down the middle and kills Darth Maul. It's really great. Stuff like that it, really makes the show really good. But yeah. that's like 10% of the show. So it's going in it C-tier. It basically right. just shows you at that moment that Obi-Wan's been living rent-free in Maul's head since he fucking killed him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, so... Anyways, Obi-Wan's it's, it's worth The main episodes are worth watching. Um, it adds to it. It's pretty cool. C-tier. Yeah, C-tier. Yeah. Obi-Wan. This is tough, dude. It's hearts to rank, bro, but... Yeah. Um... <laughs> oh god who wants to give their We're take gonna, this, first people are gonna get mad at us for this bro i don't know i um is this d tier or or is this I, low c tier like this is kind of where i'm waiting for me nah I'd bro it, i actually think I'd star wars it. rebels is better than obi-wan kenobi think, <laughs> and I mean, the clone wars count dooku and that's so fair. show yeah I, I get that i put it at bro they dropped the ball on it here you, you guys explain your uh okay when yeah, you guys go first I, I mean, I don't have, feeling, the, I don't have any like, yeah. I don't know where to put it. I liked parts of it, and I strongly disliked more parts of it. So I mean, it was so great when, to see Obi Wan. Yeah, right? when I look back on the positives, but, I see a negative, uh, anxiety driven, um, almost hateful Obi Wan. I wouldn't say hateful, but like, hopeless is a better word. Scared, hopeless Obi Wan, scared, and I love that. I truly do. The first two episodes are all, like damn near 10 out of 10s because of the way Obi-Wan's portrayed. And I loved in the second episode seeing Obi-Wan almost as like fucking Ethan Hunt spy shit going through the undergrounds of Coruscant and beating the shit out of people being fucking, you know, really badass without using his lightsaber. I thought that was some of the coolest shit they could have done with this character is show this other side of Obi-Wan where he's on the fence, where he's like, you know, borderline, but he's not, he still has that semblance of like, this is my way, like, it's my way. And I think that was masterfully done. You get past that and the show just, just yeah. falters. Yeah, it fails. Uh, it I think really the fails. whole character of Reva is, a, is a miss. I'm sorry, but yeah, fuck um... Reva. Um, I think Leia, was pretty poorly placed into the show. Um, the chase scene through the woods. More... Remember that? My... Yeah. Also, like, oh my god, I, I can't catch her. I like that Flea was in the show. <laughs> he he should have done a better job at collecting Leia, though. Anyways, <laughs> I'm putting it in D tier. I think I'm yeah. going to put it in D tier as well. The final battle between Obi-Wan and Darth Maul was... Anakin is gone. It was just... It was just... It was just... It was cringe, bro. Like, I wanted it to be good, and, and there was parts of it that, you know, I was, like, excited, and I was happy that it was happening, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really add to Star Wars story. It Bless doesn't me. really even add to takes Obi-Wan's character it, in my opinion. too much. It hurts um, things. That ending part definitely does hurt things, which is why this show is going to be D instead of C. Because like Aaron said, there were some good parts, there was some good stuff. The setup was okay, you know, they, they set up a couple things that as they normally do with this new age Star Wars, don't come to fruition. Um, the, like I said, Reva was a swing and a miss. Um, yeah, why is this like a trend having to always add like four sin side characters that don't like? 22nd of March, I'd love to see you. Uh, do, do you want to? Sorry, I saw Sean um, Millis and I had to play him for a second. <laughs> um, that was done on purpose, I'd like to say. Okay. Um, Sean Millis, baby uh sorry actually i lost my train of thought oh yeah um, the what's her name um reva 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 they do this a lot in shows nowadays where they have like a character and then they force in side characters that kind of they don't add to the character the the, the story but they kind of like take away from it and they, they push the the character aside like they kind of pushed obi-wan's story aside um, if, if anyone knows what the point this of happens a lot in film in nowadays show was like why just drop it in the comments like if anyone knows the point how does storytelling? You think over the years storytelling is only get better, but like it's gotten worse, like with a lot of stuff. Like it didn't add to the story, and you see this a lot in shows where they shove in characters and uh, to try like force characters on there that don't add anything to the story. Like no one cared I'm about tired her. To talk. She makes me upset, bro. But yeah, do you have anything else to say? Uh, just leave in the comments if you know why Rebel was in the show. I would really, <laughs> I, I really. Want to. So I, I want to give my take. Other than that, 
it was really cool to see um that's about it nothing the only reason um, why this isn't in f tier is because ewan mcgregor's in it to be honest yeah, it, <laughs> i love seeing you know i love seeing ewan mcgregor i loved those first i liked those first two episodes i loved them yeah, yeah. the so, show did really nothing but kind of ruined some canon um yeah. and 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 just kind of diminish some integral parts of star wars so yeah i i, I kind of have two takes on this i think if you're not like a super hard star wars fan um you'd probably like this more than we do uh because yeah. as a show Agreed. by itself it's actually okay uh Besides the Rebel. character development with obi-wan <laughs> right uh the character development with obi-wan is you know it's, it's character development he's kind of a broken hero and it becomes a full hero again by the end of the show it's kind of cool um yeah. obviously there's uh stuff shoved in that kind of took away from obi-wan's character um for example reva uh and also to the girl and the robot i think were a little forced as well like the the i think she dies right and and the robot they both die or just the robot i don't know but uh it was supposed to be a really sad scene but they didn't make me like the characters i didn't have enough time to like them and you, you see this a lot in modern film a lot where like they make a really sad sequence, but they didn't do any character development for the person. So you're sitting there like, why? Yeah. I like I don't care that they're dead. Thank you. They were taken away from Obi-Wan. Please go right. away. So like, you know, I'm there cheering while I should be there crying. It's kind of the thing uh, for um, Star Wars fans, though. Oh, you want to add something? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up what you have to say. OK, so for Star Wars fans, this is a lot worse. Because one, Disney doesn't really know how to force seems to work. They treat it more like a superpower. So, for example, when Obi Wan fights Darth Vader, he's standing there like Jesus as rocks swirl around him and hurl <laughs> down on Darth Vader. The oh, force doesn't work part. like that. Um, and you see this a lot in a lot of Disney Star Wars. They don't seem to understand that the force is like something you wield. It's an art form. It takes years, even if you have high metachlorian count, to learn how to wield. Um, and, and obi-wan by the way is not particularly known for being very powerful in the force is he that is correct uh although he, he becomes powerful because he masters his use of the force um correct. but yeah there's kind of a cap on him uh not enough to be jesus and also too uh the broken obi-wan in the beginning turns a lot of people off because sure for the show it's good storytelling but it's kind of out of character for obi-wan because obi-wan's already gone through his lowest points in the past his um yeah. Duchess Sartine, his like wannabe girlfriend, is killed in front of him, his master's killed in front of him, and Obi-Wan never broke. Uh like he knows what it's be it's like to go through his lowest points, and he always stays true to being a Jedi. So the whole setup of him being like super paranoid and scared is out of character, I think, for a lot of people. It is for me. Um I, let me know what I you agree. think. But it was definitely shocking and i wasn't expecting it because i thought that obi-wan would be in a place of sure you know everything that he's ever loved has left him but he would he's he's obi-wan you know he's kind of in a spot of, of like just reflection which i will say um if there is a season two it kind of seems like that's the path that they were going to send him down for that when he sees qui-gon at the end it's kind of like now he's the Obi-Wan that we see in A New Hope. Um, he has to make it through this hurdle. So that's something that I can see they were wanting to do. They just they fumbled the bag so many times on the way to where... There's some other, like... Didn't work. There's, really there's silly stuff, to too. Like, why show. is Obi-Wan scared of Darth Vader? He beat him once, and he's weaker now than he was before. Like, why is he scared of him? Also, really small things, super irritating. Like, Darth Vader is standing... And Obi Wan and are standing next to each other, and the only thing separating them is a little bit of fire on the ground, like, and it stops Darth Vader from going and attacking him, <laughs> like goofy, right. goofy stuff. Um, also, yeah. too, the the whole fight at the end was unnecessary. I think it ruins the fight in Episode Four. Um, because Darth Vader's yeah. scared of Obi Wan in Episode Four, and sure, it's like, oh, he beats yeah. me again a second time, but for me, it takes away from the fight in Episode Four. It's the reason why the fight in Episode Four is so conservative, is because. Darth Vader knows. Darth Obi -Wan Vader is, yeah. is like one of the only people out there that can actually beat him. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it just it adds stuff to the story that takes away. It adds stuff to the lore that takes away from like the story for me. Yeah, and I can't get I behind think, it. It's yeah. I almost I actually want to put an F tier after talking more. I'm throwing an F tier. I'm sorry. That's it's fine. not good. It uh, 
It, 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 it ruins too much Star Wars for me to want to like it. I'm throwing in an F tier. All right. I think and, we're all I'm ready for Andor. Vote on that one. Um, William hasn't seen Andor, so have you seen it, Aaron? Yeah, I love Andor. I like all really right. love Andor. Here, I'll, I... I'll start off on this one if you don't mind, because I didn't really get to talk about Obi-Wan too much. Um, but I don't really have anything else to say. Yes, yeah, I had a lot to say on that, <laughs> that show. Oh, yeah, you, you, cleaned, <laughs> you cleared it up. Um, okay, Andor. Andor is a very different... It's something that we have never seen in Star Wars before. Uh, it starts off barely even feeling like Star Wars. It feel, feels like just another sci-fi um, storyline. Bricks which in the wall. Is, you know, it took me a second to really get into it. But dang, it it is cool to see this side of Star Wars. Kind of like a more gritty underworld where there's not a single Jedi. There's not a single lightsaber in the entire show. I get why people kind of say that that's a negative thing because, you know, they want to go to the Star Wars universe and they want to have an escape. They want to see, you know, Jedi and, and, uh, force and big lightsaber fights and everything. But that's simply not what this show is. It's a character driven show. It's about Andor and his, you know, how he gets involved with the rebel and Alliance and his devotion crime and jail. And there's a lot of heartfelt moments and, well-written characters um the show also took its time to let these things develop i think there was like 12 episodes which is way more than all the other disney yeah, shows. It was really well paced, yeah. wasn't it yeah very well paced for sure um it was definitely a slow burn so if you're not into that sort of thing then this probably is not your cup of tea so this is not for everybody but it's a neat change for star wars and i like it what did it add to the star wars like I remember people saying like it was it was actually really good, um, but it was kind of it was like its own storyline, right? In the Star Wars universe, mm-hmm. before yeah. Rogue One, it's 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 basically it just follows Andor and like his his, his introduction into the rebellion, introduction yeah. into the rebellion. It ha- it doesn't have a lot more that it does. Well, for it's the very Star real, Wars right? Like real and gritty. Other than that, yeah. Let me let me clarify his it's his introduction into like the official rebellion because he's been rebelling against the empire since he was a little boy right but his official introduction to the rebellion is in this through Skarsgård's character whoever he was i forgot his name but it shows it's very gritty whim yeah i've it's as gritty as it can get for star wars and it shows like andor's devotion like he almost has to set aside a lot of things for the rebellion um and it, it honestly there's a moment with Skarsgård's character at the end, and it's it's so cool, like to show that the rebellion like has to make all these sacrifices to to work. Yeah, the fact the Empire. And it kind of leads into Rogue One, where you see Cassian as like a very hard ass, almost like a dick. You know what I mean? Because he knows what it what it what it what it has to take for the He's rebellion. He's been hardened. He's yeah. seen shit happen. You know he. Yeah, he's exactly. willing to make the hard. I want to that. make an That's assumption here that maybe uh-huh. people like it too. It sounds like it's really one of the only shows out there, or I guess media in Star Wars, where it's normal people in the Star Wars universe, not Jedi, yes. not like Mandalorians. Oh, yeah. It's just the experience of normal people, and I, I bet that this makes it really it, interesting. Yeah, exactly. It's very it's cool. Cool to see this side of the it Star like Wars adds realism. That yeah, we always it, it, know, knew knew was there. But we never really got to experience it without yeah. the caveat of like having a Luke Skywalker or someone. You know, it feels like uh... bounty hunters and mm. all this. I'm gonna put it in B tier. I I'll don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, there's a couple things that you know are lacking. It it doesn't have for me the. I I I do like to see, you know, big. I, I like to see like lore mm-hmm. and and. You know things that really change the course of Star Wars. Th- this this story is something that I would recommend going to if you want to see a show like this. I don't think you need to watch it. You could skip it, skip over it if you're doing a marathon. It's definitely not a necessity, but it's a great um, sort of uh, piece of television that happens mm. to be in the Star Wars universe. 
and it definitely adds a lot in its own right. But um, guys, doesn't quite get into a tier for me. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to ask uh, after we do Rogue One, do you want to finish tomorrow? Yeah, I noticed you sound really tired. Yeah, yeah. Sure, um, I'm down. Because I'll have I'm a gonna... lot of time tomorrow after seven. Okay. Let's just stop now. There, let's just uh, call it well, now. No, okay. let's do Rogue One so that we have. Yeah, so we finish good. up the prequels, we finish up all that, and then we just have four, five, six, and then the right. sequels. Okay. Yeah. So that leads what us right saying, into kid? that leads us right into Rogue One, um, which I think is that does a, get the A tier treatment for me. It's an A tier or an S tier, I would yeah. say, right? I um, can totally see S tier, but personally, I agree. I'm gonna Disney hit hard with this. This was like their first movie, wasn't it? I'm putting it in S tier. Was it this Second or movie. Force Awakens? Force Awakens. Probably like less, but... they hit hard yeah, with this movie. I got some thinking. I got some thinking to do because I have to think yeah. about like, do I like it as much as A New Hope? Well, here's the and thing. I have no complaints about this movie. I can't think of one thing I don't like about it. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen right it. On that one, but it's another one, kind of like what it sounds like Andor is. It adds mm-hmm. kind of like realism to the Star Wars universe. It makes mm-hmm. by showing regular people in the show, it really shows uh, or in the universe, it shows how scary the Empire actually is. And right. again, like the sacrifice yeah. people have to go through See, to make it. I'm and it shows how they got the Death Star plans. Like the I one don't thing have anything to oh, go ahead. Uh, just the one thing that differentiates Rogue One from Andor to me is the stakes. The stakes in Rogue One are a lot higher. You feel the yes. tension. You feel mm-hmm. the emotion. You feel like the uh you feel the like what is the word i'm looking for like the, the like tension, how di- right? how like dire that's... it is how dire yeah. it is to get this job done like they you feel how important this job is you know yeah i feel like before like... this this shit happens before this takes place we're met with a very hopeless rebellion <laughs> i'd like to say the rebellion is not very like at an all time low they're saying maybe we should give this up maybe it's not worth it and then there's this sliver of hope because of her father. And then on a one shot chance, they get it done. And it's cool. And you like, yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. Bold. The sacrifice that they went through to get the, the Death Star uh, plans. And also, too, they do Darth Vader, right? Like whoever made this movie or the team of charged it, they knew what Star Wars oh my was. God, I forgot about Darth Vader's hallway. Which scene. is a problem in that a lot of the crazy. newer newer forms of Star Wars media. It's like they don't really know what Star Wars is. This is a yeah. like there's a clear, concise story. It's and they follow it really well. There's no annoying side stuff shoved in your face. Uh, it's one of the, like it's one of the best movies Disney's released. Uh, it's like yeah, since they've the acquired movie. Star Wars, and I, I don't want, know what happened. I want to put it in s tier but for me the difference between s tier and a tier is a serious emotional attachment and i just don't have that with this movie that's Um, true so that that's my personal criteria for s tier just just in case anyone out there wants to know my personal criteria i bear i don't like putting things in s tier unless i personally like unless they change find them perfect perfect Perfect. i mean this movie can be considered perfect 100 percent agree it is lives at the top of a tier for me but it just doesn't have like the personal connection to me. Yeah, so that's, that's why fair. my personal list has it at A, and I totally understand why anyone would have it at S because I also do not have any complaints about it. Yeah, so I'm with Owen S tier as well. Um, great acting too. That's another thing too. I think Everything I'm gonna, about oh, it. Oh yeah, I, I agree with you. Fire. But I don't know. After watching Andor, I almost have a serious emotional attachment to Cassian. Mm. He's an incredible character. I love the way he yeah. was written, and Andor that sh- like that makes show this is... better, you know. Yeah, it the makes Andor it hit even harder. The Andor TV show is like, I think everybody needs to watch that. Uh, I actually don't, but I think if you like a good story, like if you're a fan of storytelling, you need to watch Andor, whether you're a fan of Star Wars or not, because it's more so a good story than it is a good Star Wars story, and that's what I love so much about Andor. It builds this character that you finally are like because in in rogue one you're like okay cassian's cool but you don't really like him until the end and then in andor you're like whoa there's like a person there you know he feels real he feels like he exists he doesn't feel like a character he feels like a person and that's what i like i love that 
I love when there's people like that. Like to bring up Breaking Bad, that all of those characters feel like people. Do you know what I mean? They don't feel like characters, Agreed. and that's what I like about Endor a lot. Uh, he feels like that, and that's makes Rogue One, I think, bordering S tier and A tier. I'll probably know more tomorrow. I'll be more confident. Yeah, I'm throwing an S tier. I think it deserves it. Um, it's the, it's really like one of the, it's the not TV show, but movie wise, it's the only good Star Wars movie Disney's made. I think I agree with your A tier. C and B seemed a little harsh, to be honest. Oh, I think A tier makes more sense. Should I put Andor in A tier? I have it in A tier. I haven't, I haven't watched it, but actually. it sounds like an A tier show. Anyway, we're on A New Hope, right? Yes, A New Hope. All righty. I think A New Hope is classic. Fucking, you know, it's classic. It's Star started Wars. the whole thing. There's really not a lot to say about A New Hope besides like tried and true hero's journey. You know, we start off with Luke Skywalker. We have a good wise master in Ben Kenobi. We see the beginnings of all these <laughs> intricate relationships that are continuing to evolve and intertwine throughout George Lucas's Star Wars. And it just sets up so many great things. And honestly, it stands alone as like a great movie in and of itself. Like he could have just stopped it after this one. I mean, he didn't plan. It he didn't really plan to make a second one. I don't think, right? It wasn't ah, the whole I mean, thing. He wrapped he it up with them basically killing the Death Star. He just left an open string, which was that. He didn't really show the Darth, Darth Vader. Vader getting killed. Yeah. But I think in and of itself, it's a, it's just the purest A tier. Yeah, yeah I agree. I have to agree. I would have, yeah. Right smack dab in the middle of A tier. It's uh, it also I uh Alec Guinness won an Oscar for that film, did he not? Best supporting actor. Oh, did he? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. For, in in Obi Wan. Um I believe he won. I almost best supporting actor in 1978 or nice. Wait, who who's Alice Guinness? Who did he play? Alex he played Obi Wan. Oh, he played Obi Wan. Okay, you know <laughs> the Clone Wars made A New Hope better too, just because that the, the Obi Wan talking about Anakin. You think about the Clone Wars Skywalker, Anakin. Oh, I know, right? That little part. That's true. yeah. That's, That's really very cool. True. Um, shoot, I almost considered putting it in S tier. Um, although I don't, it's kind of hard because it's the movie so old, but first time it was revolutionary, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah, the no, style, he win, but he was, he was nominated. He don't, he uh, did not win. but yeah, like the no CGI, um, like they made miniatures, like certain backgrounds were actually paintings, I think, or drawings, practical like, effects. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was, a, it was like a, the first time like people saw like stuff like mm-hmm. this in the big screen. Um, yeah I'm, so it was very I'm revolutionary like fan, very like true practical effects like that as well like it, it just goes I mean, a very long ways even in today's you know cgi where cgi looks more real in real life type shit i still depending on the film of course i still love a good practical effects almost more than cgi sometimes yeah depending on the film of course i'm gonna leave it at top of a tier um because it starts up in great uh, although the the story is a classic, so it's not necessarily anything too original. Although the universe is original, but I right. think A tier is good because it started something great and it created other shows that become S tier because of A New Hope. That's going to be my excuse for keeping it in A. I'm leaving it in A is because um, for everything it does have, it doesn't quite pack that emotional punch. That exactly. Yeah. The Empire Strikes Back kind of has. Um, yeah. I think George Lucas really capitalized on that with the Empire Strikes Back. And, uh, you know, this is a classic adventure film, but yeah. Perfect to, example to of break, the hero's journey. To break yep. into that ech- upper echelon of S tier, you have to have that yeah. severe emotional punch, which I think is a perfect transition to Empire Strikes Back, which I'm going to put in S tier. Yep, I am too. As well. I'm putting it in second S tier. This is like the first just absolute banger of a star wars movie (laughs) um it has everything you want it has everything that a new hope has uh added on top of just like we were saying that emotional punch there's some big massive reveals some iconic moments you know i'm your father um some great acting from mark hamill Um, oh of course it really just further deepens uh the lore and mythology of the original Mm. movie and introduces you know, more, um exciting some really cool new uh, characters as well <laughs> like Boba fett yes yeah, um, we also get to see we also Lando get to see Kyle. darth vader 
Yoda, one of the Calrissian. Oh yeah, the Darth Vader fight mm -hmm. scene with Luke was super super good. Also, you get too, to see Darth Vader do a lot more in this one as well. Like that in was the, in the fourth one. He like has his scenes and he has his moments, but in this one, like there's no more. Um, oh my God, what's that guy's name? Moff. Moff Gideon. Moff, Gideon? Moff no. Tarkin. Oh, Moff Tarkin. Tarkin. Yeah, Moff Tarkin. Yeah. Also, and guys, there's no, there's no uh, more Grand Moff Tarkin to like kind of push him around. Like Vader's in charge here. Vader's doing what he thinks is best, and I think that's very except, cool to see. Except he's not, because the Emperor is introduced in well, this movie, which leads that's... the audience to see this greater evil in the universe, which is really cool and a great addition to. Oh yeah, we don't see the Emperor world. till. That's true. Episode but... five, yep. right? Wow, that's I didn't even think about that. The point of me saying that was just to say, like, in the fourth oh, one, you see yeah. Vader tries to do all these. You see things, Vader be more independent in like, Star Wars Five. No, no, you're not allowed to do that. And in Star Wars yeah. Five, there's no Grand Moff Tarkin to do that. Vader's just being Vader. Of course, he's like you know doing the bidding for the Emperor, but he's not like yeah. in shackles or being pushed. You around. see him doing his own thing more. You get to see a lot more Vader uh, running the Which scene. Yeah, I think is very very, cool. and it is very cool. Um, yeah. I love the fight scene between Vader and Luke in this one uh, mm, a lot. Me too. Uh, also, I also too, like Han in this movie a lot mm -hmm. as well. I think Han's character development starts to really get get moving in this one, which is very very cool to see with him getting frozen in kryptonite and just like accepting that almost. Yeah, it was a crazy for the time because like people didn't know what was going to happen after that. You know. Yeah. It's like oh my gosh, they actually lost. Holy cow! You know. <laughs> yeah. The story um, was a lot more uh also unique to the the plot twist with darth vader being luke luke's father like nobody knew that that was a complete out of nowhere i know right uh i've had older people tell me that it was like one of the craziest things in the theater it's like oh my god he's his father I mean, like nobody yeah. like no one thought of that yeah i know it, it became in such an iconic moment in movie history just because of how shocking it was and how uh well played off it was you know and it, how well it fit into everything that was happening at the time yeah but yeah i that's uh reason why i'm putting an s tier i agree with everything you guys said um, did you guys are you guys ready to move on to the return of the jedi i am sure i really like the uh the old drawing look of these original trilogy <laughs> posters covers oh i know right even yeah, the cool. the this the prequels stayed with that same style Honestly, I just I, I all the artwork on the movies in general are is just really cool. I, yeah. I like the like that sort of vibe. But yeah, Return of the Jedi. I'm thinking it's also a solid A tier. Um, this movie for me was a big part of my childhood. I always looked up to Luke Skywalker, and I always went back to this movie when it was just on VHS. And uh, I loved the green lightsaber and. You know, because that was that was also a new thing in this movie was the green lightsaber. It was just blue and red before that. But no, I I I had a great time with this movie as a kid, and I think it still uh, holds up as an adult. You get to see Luke much more mature, um, much more you know just along in his Jedi journey. You know, he's a Jedi Knight now, and yeah, uh, he's it creates the Luke that we mistakes. look up to. The end the end of this movie. Sets up that yeah. Luke Skywalker that stayed true to the Jedi path. You know, Jedi never I mean, yeah, give up. Uh, they always hold you hope. Think about it. Like this is the Luke Skywalker that lived on in so many people's hearts from the '80s all the way until you know, 2000 the prequels. I mean the sequels. Sequels <laughs> like this. This is that Luke. You know, the one that like redeemed he, he, Darth Vader. Yeah, like brought back Anakin this, Skywalker. Such a great you know cli climactic ending to this trilogy yeah there's a couple things people like to nit nitpick about like we, we were talking earlier a little bit about the ewoks and stuff but yeah the beginning can be a little or like the middle sections can be a little slow so it's not s tier mm -hmm. but the the ending really carries it um you have the amazing space battle honestly that space battle is super underrated <laughs> it's probably yeah. one of the best in star You're wars right. it is a really good space battle like it is so good. I think it's better than episodes four's space battle. Like shit really goes crazy. You got Lando up there just fucking <laughs> going crazy in the Millennium. They Falcon. definitely had that you higher got, budget. Oh yeah, for sure. You got Han Solo doing his thing with Leia. I thought the Ewok thing worked. Aaron and I were talking about it a little earlier. I think it landed. You get the cute Ewoks. You know, space you Get a bit of a a riveting a riveting story. 
I mean, it kind of works, right? Their technology wasn't really built for operating in dense woods like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I know people like to complain like, oh, they were just made for to, to sell toys. But like, isn't that what Star Wars is in general? <laughs> isn't that a big point of some of these characters throughout history? Especially Disney know? Star Wars, Baby Yoda. <laughs> I mean, the only reason like why he exists. In, it's been like that for Star Wars just forever, you know? Yeah. Like. Episode one, Darth Maul, like selling toys has always been a big thing. Did Ewoks but... become a big thing people bought when that movie came out? Oh, was that yeah. Like a, did sure. that work? Yeah. Yes. Because I've actually never really seen the Ewoks like, animal or anything. Ewoks are now something that everybody knows. You know, it's like Darth Vader. It's like Vader, a part of pop Ewok. culture, right? Yeah. yeah. People know. What I've it's just never personally seen an Ewok like stuffed animal. That's probably because we are 20 years too late for this movie. But... <laughs> yeah, before our time. Now it's, now it's like baby yoda's taking taking his place taking the scene um yeah what do you guys what do you guys have to say yeah aaron do you have anything to add to what gabe said no you guys summed it up pretty well the uh yeah the fight scene at the end was great the conversation between luke and emperor darth vader yes um everyone knows this if you're watching this you've probably seen the movies so like Mm -hmm. you can understand why we like it yes these originals are like very you know People, Although, lo- people all love them, and people all love them for a reason. So, something I'm really happy about his tier list is all of the movies, mm-hmm. except for Episode Two, are in A and S tier right now. All the think, original, yeah. the the core movies, the, the six. I think, I think that I'm mm-hmm. going to put um, it in S tier, actually. Yeah. Really? Okay. That's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah, I almost did. I almost did put it in S tier. Yeah, I mean, I just don't have anything to complain about, and I think I like it more than Episode Four and One. Like a considerable amount yeah and then i honestly it was my favorite as a kid of the sequels was return of the jedi uh or sorry of the originals fucking sequels it was my favorite as a kid (laughs) so i just kind of really have a great affinity for it and i honestly don't i don't know if people complain about it but i've heard some people like i don't like or i do like the opening sequence with Baba, Baba, fuck! What is going on with me? Uh, Baba, Boba Fett? Fett and Jabba the Hutt. Boba. Yeah, and some people didn't like that, which is why so it's not cool. probably as. I really like that part. Like, I thought that yeah, was. Really I didn't cool have any points about Luke it. Had like a whole plan, and yeah, you know, and they went to the Sarlacc pit, and Han was gonna die, and then like yeah, Han fell down, and he almost got swallowed up. They were like pulling him back up. What I else? That was cool. really cool. Yeah, I like that whole sequence. I also like that when Luke was introduced, you're like, it's kind of like you're kind of thinking there for a second. Did he turn to the dark side? Yeah, because he's, he's like choking black. those pigs and he's wearing all black. And oh, like, yeah. I didn't even think about that. I, That's funny. I've heard people talk about that before. Like when they were kids, like I low key thought he turned to the dark side when I was a kid. Like, oh, when they first wow. The movie. And I was like, I, yeah, That's actually it makes sense. Point. Yeah. It was Jedi. Jedi don't normally use force choke. No, and he was like all That's... in shadow and everything. And... Yeah, all black. Get a hood on. He's changing he the norms for what it means too. to be a Jedi. He meant business. This movie, I, I think I'm going to move it to See, too, bro. Luke, Luke knew what the problem was with the Jedi. They were too narrow-minded and too strict in the rules. He was just yeah. trying to get him away from him. He's like, bro, I'm going to force choke you. Get out of my face. Walks by The him. Jedi texts. The Jedi texts. But the, no. the Jedi texts. Yeah, Luke knew the flaws the Jedi made. <laughs> he, he fixed them in, in this universe. When we get to the freaking sequels, we'll talk about that. But yeah. Right. He, he knew what was going on. Um, So, S or A tier. Now I, I got mine at top of A tier. There are a few little yeah, weird I'm things in it. Tier. So, I want to keep it in A tier. I prefer it to Rogue One, and I also have more of an emotional attachment to Rogue One. It also has the magic that Rogue One, Rogue One doesn't, so that's Honestly, why I have it in S tier. And I think I'm still on the fence. I'm putting S uh, Rogue One at that low end of S tier or the very, very high end of A tier. Like, I don't know what to do there. Yeah. I'm also going to put Return of the Jedi in S tier just because it does have that magic for me. Um, and I might put Rogue One there later, too. <laughs> I don't know, but... If you guys are ready for The Mandalorian, I am. Alrighty, A tier. We know why it's not an S tier. So, just to preface <laughs> yeah, this, William has, William has not seen season three. No, nope. I was told it was terrible. I'm not wasting eight hours to watch it. <laughs> so yeah, spoiler um, alert. I watched it. Aaron, you watched it, right? I did watch it. We were both. That's why. Just, 
We'll do a quick little season three rant for like two minutes. Just yeah. Um, we all love yeah. season one and two. Oh, season three, they just took a massive dip in quality, massive dip in storytelling. Uh, I don't really know what they were doing with the whole Bo-Katan taking over thing. I thought it was kind of out of left field. I thought it was very fan servicey. Bringing Moff Gideon back is just highly cringe. It I sounds like it was thinking, kind of mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Bringing Moff Gideon back. Uh, a lot of wokeness in it, wasn't there? Like. Really yeah, pushing Anderson aside felt, to replace him with a quote unquote woman, right? It felt it felt there like there was a lot of like that, yeah. New like push, pushing, sorry, let me tell you about, pushing political agenda too much. It sounded like, yeah. It, it also sounded like um, they were almost like you said, gave fan servicey. Like Bogotan's a character from the Clone Wars, yeah. and to have yeah. her be a main character of her own thing would be like, oh, she deserves. Oh, everybody justice. loves the Clone Wars, you know. Like, let's yeah. give them what they want. But no, it just is done very Didn't poorly. If they wanted to do that, they could have made her have her own show and have Mando have nothing to do with it. Because Honestly, the Mandalorian was not supposed to do, was not supposed to be about the Mandalorian race. It was supposed to be about our character Mandalorian, who's a bounty hunter, and his duty with this little creature to take him to the Jedi. And then after that, it just kind of went downhill because he took him to the Jedi, and yeah. that was peak. Because it that sets up this really riveting story throughout season one and two that leads straight directly into the Mandalorian Jen Jaren um, to uh, take over Mandalore. He's set up perfectly. You see his arc throughout this, that he's kind of like an unsuspecting hero. He doesn't really mm-hmm. want these responsibilities at the beginning, but he has a soft spot. And then throughout the first two seasons, you kind of see him grow and become, and, you know, start to consider like, I care about this Mandalorian way of life and maybe I want to see it through, but no, they just strip all that shit from him. They go fan service direction um, in more ways than one because of all obviously bringing back, back Moff Gideon and having him. I don't know what the fuck. He's yeah. Doing. Why did they bring him back? I, I need what to going on. I want to, he's trying to clone some. Oh God. The clone people. stuff again. I'm he so sick of the cloning thing. He's trying to make foreign... He's trying to make more sensitive. sensitive. Shoving oh, metachlorians into his bloodstream. Is that what was going on? Yeah. There was like a bunch of Moff Gideon clones oh, and then they got all blown up. And okay, that guys, sounds super I'm going to be honest. If I'm ranking Mandalorian season three, it's cringe. But if I'm yeah. ranking one and two, it's S. So it's Here's literally like. Yeah, one and two is S. Season three is cringe. So I'm putting it in B. I might put it in A just because of how great. <laughs> I haven't seen season are, three yet. So it's an A for me. Yeah, I'm not like, going to watch season three. <laughs> I feel I like I'd be this. doing a disservice to ranking the whole show as S tier. And then people are no, like. No, no, no. Not S tier. I know it's an A, a for me. Like, it's still you know, season three Here's is the that thing. bad. <laughs> season three is cringe. Season it's one like, and two is uh, like it's original story. It's a good. It's a good story too. It's original, mm-hmm. like one one of the good original ones made by Disney. Uh, a new character too made by Disney is actually good. It's kind of yes. amazing, actually. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of Lucasfilm for doing such a thing. Uh, right. Same. And then at the end of season two with Luke Skywalker, it's the only good depiction of Luke Skywalker before Disney bought it that we have. Um, After Disney bought it? Yeah. Yeah. So I think all that justifies it to be an A tier. But then again, I I haven't um, watched season three. I can totally get behind you saying that. But at the same time, having seen season three, I just feel like it's not fair to rank it A tier after that (laughs) absolute mess. It sounds like was it sounds like season three shouldn't have been a Mandalorian. It should have been called Bokton. That's like, what I'm. Much, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because the Mandalorian I, season two or Boba Fett. Okay, we'll get into that. But it, after the Mandalorian season two, it kind of led into this, like you said, Gabe. Jin Jin's gonna go become the king of Mandalore, and if he decided not to, they should have shown like what Jin was gonna do otherwise instead of. Let's just say bo is going to take right. over the show instead. Yeah. Uh, I I just kind of want to go back, harken back to season one and season two. Um, great Star Wars, right? This is everything people wanted from Disney. Oh, Star when Wars. they reintroduced Boba Fett, it was so cool. They wanted original characters, original stories. They wanted something riveting. These are all things that seasons one and two had. They all led up to one goal, which was to, you know, save this child and bring him to a place where he 
belonged, which was with the Jedi. And it was so utterly satisfying to see him, you know, go with Luke. It was so bittersweet, you know, at the same time. The emotion was so perfectly executed by Pedro Pascal and the whole cast, even the CGI Luke. I didn't think it was that bad. There was basically um, an end. There was like a full story written and they had a big, like it, kind of beginning, middle and end. Like there wasn't a season three, but a uh, two and three, but like the whole arc was like there, which is nice. Yeah. Cause you don't see that in filmmaking a lot. They usually try to drag it out until it dies and gets really bad. Um, like they could have ended on a season two and they should have, they should have made a new show called Bo-Katan and like maybe uh, Mando. No, they Mandalorian was in Mando- Mandalorian season three. And then just, Kind of well, <laughs> have him be the main character. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, if they wanted the Bo-Katan, they should have had her in his own show and not yeah. taken right. away from Mandalorian. Um, yeah, that's what I'm putting in B tier. Because I would have much rather have seen, sadly, uh, the next step, which is okay. He doesn't have Grogu anymore. He's moved on. You know, this is like a life lesson too. Things don't last forever, right? right. And now his duty is to go and reclaim Mandalore. And maybe it's like this cool story <laughs> of like. He goes and brings all the Mandalorians back together, and there's like this big fight to like reclaim Mandalore. Like that would have been so much cool. Yeah, they like go to war. That's kind of what I was expecting a from new season. War stars. It would have been yeah, a really good storytelling. That it set it still it set itself up very perfectly at the end of season two. But, but they're more focused on political agenda, it sounded like, and fumbled the bag. Fans Unfortunately, Lucasfilm is like that agenda. really bad right now. They don't have they don't seem to have like a good creative department for like managing these things. Like, okay, this was cool. Alrighty, so let's go hire some new writers now. They don't understand what we just the, the last thing was written. <laughs> right. Um, I also want to put in in B tier. I'm. I just want to preface though again, uh, or reiterate, I should say. You know what? That if this was season one and two, I would have it in S tier. If this was purely season three, I have it in. I want to put it in B tier too. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and put it at the top of B for all the reasons that we just explained. Yeah, you guys are right. I'm gonna put it in B tier too because it is part of his story. And also, too, we're getting ready to get to Boba Fett, which is where uh, Grogu chooses this, like, Grogu and Mando stay together. I think that was a bad storytelling. Oh, so that also helps with that, too. So, yeah, I'll put it in the B tier as well. Um, great start, horrible finish. <laughs> and I don't like seeing it next to um, Return of the Jedi and New Hope and Episode 1. Now that yeah, I think about it. Either. So it's going in B tier. All right. Okay. Um, so Boba, Boba Fett, Fett, right? Yeah. Um, yeah we are, uh, nice. cringe, I think we're all in agreement that cringe. we're going to just toss him in cringe. Hot garbage. Um, Who wants to explain we can why? Give, we can give a couple uh, pointers here. I, I guess we'll go one, two, three. Um, yeah, so Boba is uh, a, it's unfortunately just a huge disappointment. We've all <laughs> dreamed about this character, right? We've all... Badass we Boba kids. Fett on live action, beating people yeah. up, doing cool things, right? That's all Being we a bounty, bounty hunter. hunter. We, we didn't want grandpa, hero. didn't want little grandpa Boba Fett over here. Walk around with helmet off for ninety percent of the show. <laughs> yeah, just saying how he's going to do the right thing, and he's made a complete one eighty. And his with his entire life, he's got to be fucking sixty by now, and he just completely one eighty'd for God knows why. It would have made so much more um, sense if he like did that, but he used like the way he knew yeah. how to do it, like from his world. Like I'm going to try to take control of this uh, because you know the hut the hut family fell, so like he takes control of that. But, you know, does it how the Boba Fett we knew before the show was, right? So maybe, yeah. like, he had the incentive to, like, do it kind of for good. Mm-hmm. Not really, but, like, just to create order, but not be like, oh, we're going to be the nice guy and not fight. Like, that's kind of like that's kind of the thing that I thought that they missed a huge opportunity for is because Boba Fett, you know, went through a very traumatic uh, experience being basically eaten by the Sarlacc pit, right? So I think that's that would have been the perfect opportunity to have him... Uh, change as a character and have it be a long drawn out thing but I think that that change can can't be you know it, it could it can't be as great as it was they changed him to just be this grandpa dude when they had the perfect opportunity to change him from a cold-hearted criminal to a you know justified anti-hero the show was boring to be honest I agree it was very I'd like boring to point out I'd like to point out how um how do i put this how could have been such a good anti-hero. awful they made this character anti-hero portrayed during combat like if you guys remember when those people pulled out their shields and got him pushed in a circle, oh my god what was the combat he didn't show? use his back his jetpack i don't oh, even know yeah if he had the jet stuff pack like that they were just but he didn't annoyed the hell anything. out of me 
He just got yeah. hurt. He was like, oh. it's like <laughs> they've trained. He, okay, so their their explanation for him turning good was that he went through this traumatic experience. He was indoctrinated into the. Uh, uh, God, Lily, get out of the way. She's stepping on my keyboard. She, he was indoctrinated into the uh, house that's generator. Aaron's, that's Aaron's cat, just so everybody knows. Yeah, just to, just to preface, that is my cat. She's stepping all over my keyboard and my setup. But uh, he was, in, you know, brought into the Tuscan Raider culture and taught all this hand-to-hand -hand combat and all these good morals and things to, you know, rules to follow and shit like that. And that just makes him, like, it's not his unable character. to fight. It's not Boba Fett. And yeah, also, too, like, it does make him fight. Like, it just makes Boba him Fett, unable to fight? Here's the thing. Boba Fett is the best bounty hunter in a galaxy, right? Like, the best. That's supposed. That he means he can Luke. deal with some people. Yeah, he beat Luke. He can give Darth Vader a run for his money, right? Like he can't beat him, but he could give Darth Vader a little fight before losing. I think it's even canon too, right? Where that little encounter he has with Darth Vader, where Darth Vader strikes him, he pulls out a lightsaber to defend himself, and then like runs away. And then uh, uh, probably I'm pretty sure that's can canon comic book. Um, and Darth Vader, like he is number, he is Darth Vader's number one go to person for a bounty hunter, right? Like, this guy knows what he's doing. And, yeah, seeing him get beat up by some people holding shields was the most disrespectful, annoying. Yeah, like, the that people was, that wrote yeah, this that don't, say, don't know too. who Boba Fett was. I will say I agree with Gabe. Like, it, it would have been cool to see him change, but more so into a cool anti-hero. Into kind of a anti-hero. thing. Yeah. Almost like Jin. Well, where Jin, I would say, is more of a hero. But he borders on that, you know, edge of anti-hero. Jin. I'd like to see Jin Jaren, Mando. Jin. Oh, oh, sorry. I think his name's Din. Oh, is it? I think it's mm -hmm. Din Jaren. Oh, it's Din Jaren. Yeah, Din Jaren. I'm okay. not okay. mentally well. I apologize. But <laughs> I'd like to say Din is almost like an anti-hero as well, but he's just borders more right. on the hero side of things. And it would have been right. cool to see a version of Boba Fett like that, but where Boba is more uh, like willing to just fuck shit up. You know what yeah, I mean? Just, Instead of like yeah. take his helmet off and go discuss things. Like he, he uses his power. Barged in through those doors. Like killed that guy and being like this is my place now you know more like a batman that, that kills cool. like punisher yeah, something been, like that would have been real like superior spider-man it would have been so cool it would have been so much it would have even it would have even been nice to see him struggle with killing and his new newfound morality yeah like should i even yeah. still be killing people you know what i'm that saying would have been cool to explore literally yeah. anything could have been better just about anything could have yeah. been better in this hog garbage yeah, also too anything, instead of just him being like i want to talk about profit the choreography or the tuscan raider you mm -hmm. talked about it a little bit, Aaron, with the shields. His choreography was super terrible. Um, I hated the way... So, th the whole build-up, when I was watching it... Um, I actually watched it with Josh. And we, we were talking about this uh, the whole time. Because the show was really boring. Like, the whole show was about Boba Fett trying to be friends with everybody. And we just wanted to see it, him <laughs> fight. And there was a build-up yeah. to a fight at the end. He was just trying to be friends with everybody. Um, and man, it was it was so slow. But we finally got to it, and it was the biggest letdown ever because there were, yes. it wasn't cool. It it was him and Mandalorian standing there, and they were shooting, doing cute little poses as the camera pans around him. Like that's what we waited for. And then also too, Boba Fett riding on um, the Rancor, oh, the which Rancor, was kind of a cool callback complete. to the it was just fan Christmas oh, yeah. thing. But yeah, it, yeah. His like also too that. not knowing how their gear works like boba fett you know his little grenades he has on his knee that's for close quarter uh -huh. combat right he gets in the hand to hand he can knee someone and surprise him that it's like oh look my knee has little rocket missiles in him you're dead he always shoots him from long range he'll like stand into like a little pose like a ballerina pose and shoot the rockets to someone far away it made no sense it was so irritating yeah it, it all was this bullshit. All sorry this i'm like super shit. emotional about this this is we're getting to the point where uh if you watch this, you know we're hardcore Star Wars fans at this point, right? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say. Hold on, let me finish. Like you guys can probably tell, like we're not happy with the recent changes Disney's made, uh, and hopefully we explain our reasons uh, really well, um, and yes. you don't think we're just being haters because all this comes from love. We want to see Star Wars be good because there's so much potential for Star Wars. Yeah. Um, always I let agree. us know what you think in the comments below. Of love. This is all very opinionated stuff. I know there's half the population likes. Uh, some of these films that we're getting ready to talk about um but just understand like it's just uh, yeah uh coming from a place of love <laughs> to, to, to yeah, see no, good I... star wars and actually respect the the previous lore and the previous source material and don't just completely yeah. rewrite characters because it's disrespectful this... to george lucas and the fan base that su supported star wars the past 
few decades before for to people before um liking star wars was considered cool right like people that like liked star wars and got bullied for liking it you know it's disrespectful of those kind of people too that right. liked it at the risk of like kind of being like oh you like star wars cringe right right uh, star wars theory but yeah with that being said uh we won't try and harp on it too much on these future films because they're all obviously yeah. we're gonna have similar opinions on all of them so we'll try and give our honest opinions without oh saying too much of that people have said it it's been all said before um and if you guys have feel differently please yeah like william said feel free to leave it in the comments i'm we're all very interested to see different takes and we understand there's 100%. a lot of people that have Please. been grown growing up on this era of star wars which you know it is what it is that's oh, cool yeah. if you like so, it that's shit. cool <laughs> yeah um i don't um, remind you guys uh the mandalorian episode did you want to talk about that in boba fett I yeah was gonna i was that up. gonna bring I that up actually... I... go ahead Aaron. oh uh i was just gonna say first of all um the reintroduction of Cad Bane, I think his first like introduction where he fought the sheriff was kind of cool, and then they just absolutely let us down entirely. Yeah. Um, we already had the half-made Clone Wars episode where he has a gunfight with Boba, and that was really all we needed. Uh, if they were going to bring back Cad Bane, they could have done something completely different. Yeah, was it was very horrible, fan-servicey. Horrible horrible way to do so and as we were saying the mandalorian episode i think was the best part of this show i think that was the best episode it was an incredible um episode for mandalorian for mando's growth i think it's the episode uh one going of to have... Mando mandalorian season three that we really yeah uh, i was just getting to deserve. i was just going to getting to that like it was great to show what din's doing after grogu's gone and then they ruined it. They absolutely ruined it. Was and it? it? I don't remember. Was it the, that episode where he takes Grogu back? Yes. Uh, I think it was. Was that in Was it Fett? in that episode? No, 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 no. Actually, no. The he episode ended. The episode ended with uh, Luke laying out Yoda's light, laying out Yoda's lightsaber, and saying, oh. "Like, if you and choose he chooses path, Mandalorian, like, yeah, but yeah, it's all like off screen. Yeah. Um, okay. I will say though, yeah, I wanted to say that that episode has. Some fantastic fight scenes. That first scene with Mando is so intense. Oh, uh, I wish cool. I wish that it was in a show about the Mandalorian. I wish that that's kind of yeah. the vibe we got from season three because it was such a good episode, and it was disappointing to see that they would take a full away episode from out of this eight series, eight episode series to dedicate it all to Mandalorian and wrapping up something that one didn't need to be wrapped up that was already wrapped up in Mando season two and two. They had no right, no fucking right to bring Grogu back off screen of the Mandalorian show in a separate fucking show, tape, taking away from Boba Fett's show to wrap up something that was un. It was very weird. I don't know. It's so disrespectful. It's just incredibly cringe. And uh, it sucks because it was a cool just... episode. Uh, oh, yeah. Scene. It, it, was, it was, a was a great, great episode. episode. Scene also, Ahsoka with Luke was like one of the coolest things. There. I was like, oh, my God, that's Anakin's paddle one. His dad's Padawan's right there. She could tell him everything he knew. Of, she knew about Anakin Skywalker during the Clone Wars. Like it's so cool yeah. just imagining that. Um, I agree, and um, but I agree with Gabe. Bringing Grogu back was the worst decision they ever made. It kind of was the first domino that fell in what is the garbage dumpster fire that is Mandalorian. Season you know what they did too. Three. This is what makes me really irritated. You know they did it so they could sell that it was all the cell toys it was to have mandalorian with boba fett or uh yoda baby yoda in the cockpit uh in the, the naboo mm -hmm. fighter that was like Which you, you, it was so bluntly sucks. obvious that's the only reason why they did that like completely yeah, destroying was, a story I, to sell some toys it, it blows yeah because they're like we, we were literally talking about earlier selling toys and how like that's what star wars has been all about but not at the cost and sacrifice of the plot of great the sacrifice yeah like this was um, a horrible attempt to do so and they obviously blundered it doesn't make sense either because he's a bounty hunter he has nowhere to put the people he captures anymore either like there's no logic behind it right yeah like shows them right. shows them like in the in the engine or something yeah what are you saying yeah i was just gonna call back to to that and say that um it's unfortunate they could have sold just as many toys making a new show with luke and yeah, having mando be on his own but um 
yeah, all that behind us now. Um, uh, just a la- last thing, a couple things on the uh, in the last episode, it was just a big clusterfuck of who the fuck characters. knows what happened. Just people having their fan service moments, and you know the spotlight being taken away from Boba Fett at every rushed. moment. It was like they're uh... Cad Bane had about ten seconds of screen time <laughs> just to get smoked. Um, yeah, we you gotta we love got that. Cooked. Yeah, they just got a guy that could kill a Jedi. Screens. That's wow. all. The, the only reason that Cad Bane was there was to get eyes on the screens of Boba mm-hmm. Fett's final episode, which is um, what they did, I guess. And anyways, I'm one fucking last done thing. with talking about this unless you guys. Want I to agree. Talk. I just have one last thing to say. One very last thing to say about Luke and Grogu. It would have been really cool to see Luke training Grogu, knowing that Yoda trained Luke. Like the right? swap and like aesthetic and the swap. It's like a very cool contrast. That would have been a cool. Luke parallel. is now mastering yoda type of thing yeah Very yeah like cool we were saying that was such a such a good episode it's unfortunate that yeah it was anyways the place where it was disney star wars lots of right opportunity the... but not executed well <laughs> right period no more star we're going to see 7. that a lot in our next few movies here star wars so, 7 um i think we should take small turns on this one and then we I can kind of all conjoin and talk at the end yeah yep. and um because there's a lot to be said yeah. about these three movies, <laughs> but Star Wars um, yeah, Seven like is one of the easiest to talk about. I think. Saying, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. But like William was saying, um, we're all early 2000s to late 90s kids, so you guys know yeah. where our heart truly lies. But I want to start this off by saying we might have a little couple of disagreements about this film. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this film at the bottom of C tier, and I'm gonna give my reasons why. Um, some people might think that's low. Some people might think that's high. But I think this movie um, played it extremely safe. Like, it was basically a carbon copy of Episode 4. Um, it had the same tropes, the same sort of hero's journey. You know, they brought back the Death Star. All the things like that. They had plenty of their fan service moments, which, when you're reviving a, fran- a franchise like Star Wars, I know why they did that, you know? Like there's a good opportunity for it for sure. Yeah, exactly. You know, they want to do the same thing. They want to sell toys. They want to bring people to the box office. They did both those things. And I can respect that because at the end of the day, like we were saying, that is a part of star Wars. It's a part, it it pertains to kids. They want to have a tried and true story that people won't get mad at. They played it safe. So I can respect that. Also the action in this movie is really good. The movie is super pretty. Mm -hmm. It's the CGI is, is amazing. It's just great to look at. It doesn't piss you off as an old Star Wars fan. As a new Star Wars fan, it <laughs> yeah. doesn't really piss you off either. Like yeah. the decision to That's kill fair. Han Solo was a was the one and only like risk they took in this movie. And I honestly thought it paid off, or at least it had the potential of paying off. Harrison Ford finally um, wanted it too. <laughs> yeah, he was. Dying. He was like, "Finally, please, he's dead." <laughs> he took his billion dollars and then was like, All right, "This is my last." <laughs> yeah, time. yeah. Like, I think that guy hates Star he a, Wars. <laughs> he made a quarter of the box office. Yeah, a quarter of the he, box but, office went down. Uh, um, then, then they brought him back in Episode Nine for two billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, please, we need people. Like, it's take... in shambles. We need you screen yeah. time. <laughs> okay, we'll uh, we'll get to but, nine in a minute. That shit was. But yeah. Uh, another thing, I think they set up Finn's character very well. I think that uh, at the end of this movie, we are questionable if he has the uh, force. He also puts on a very brave performance against Kylo. You, He's a very likable character in this movie, an ex-stormtrooper that is, you know, working with uh, the Rebels now, basically. And uh, he obviously has a crush on Rey, which I think is pretty endearing in this movie. Uh, Kylo Ren is set up to be a fantastic villain, like murdering his father. That's who is also a f- beloved character. That's a very start to a very intriguing plot line <laughs> that goes nowhere. But um, Ray is kind of the only character that remains static throughout the whole thing, which, as you'll see, becomes a trend in this series. But um, I think there's definitely room for her improvement at this point. I think they set her up to be with Luke Skywalker, which um, is definitely a positive thing. Um, I think at the end of this day, this movie did a lot of things right, um, but it also didn't really do a whole lot. I don't hate this movie. When I go back and watch it, I have a fun time watching it. It's pretty, Mm -hmm. like I said. It's 
kind of cool. Um, it doesn't do anything that really pisses me off. <laughs> uh, it's a fun ride, but there's just not a lot of not a lot they, of they set up a lot of cool things. Uh, right. Introduction to a lot of new cool characters. Um, mm-hmm. Like this builds a foundation that could have made the next two movies really good. Uh, I agree. Yeah, they, they they had something going. There was something cool going here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's really not a whole lot to complain about, uh, other than the fact that it wasn't very original. But yeah, yeah, uh, um, they were trying something cool. You can go ahead and uh, explain anything. Uh, I, I mean, Gabe. Actually, I don't really all, have anything else to say. All the marks. Gabe, Gabe hit Although, all the marks for me. <laughs> I do. I do have to say uh, one thing is the introduction of Snoke was kind of cool. Mm. Um, although yeah. he was a, obviously a Palpatine parallel, I right. think that he almost was different enough to be very intriguing. Um, right. Like when I first watched it. I was all over the place. Like, oh my God, is Snoke Plagueis? My God, yeah. is Snoke someone we've seen before? Like, I remember those fan s- theories. This, it was a very then, exciting like, I time. Watch, I was, was watching was. videos all the time and like theorize all the time. Is Snoke from like, has he been in the shadows since before the first movie? Like, yeah. That type of is, shit. Rey, and I, is Rey reincarnated Anakin Skywalker? Is Rey reincarnated Anakin Skywalker? Is she the next chosen one? Did <laughs> Snoke imagine. create Rey? Or is like, is Rey Luke's daughter? Is Rey Obi Wan's daughter? Like, there was a lot of cool theories that sprouted from this. But my point being with that one was Snoke. Um, and obviously, like, it was just quite a literally a carbon copy of Number Four. Like, you have Grand Moff Tarkin in the orange-haired man, or whatever his name was. You no, have Kylo was Ren with Darth Vader. Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh, oh, well, I know what you're saying. My bad. Yeah, okay. I was like, yeah. Uh, but Han Solo, obviously Finn. Ray is literally Luke Skywalker. Played it too and safe. What yeah. my biggest complaint with this movie is not that it's unoriginal, is that Ray is such a poor quality character, even from yeah. the start. Like, she knows everything already. She's perfect already. She doesn't lose. She doesn't get hurt. She actually defeats Kylo. And I think that's a big, big, huge deficit. Kylo did get only... shot with the bowcaster. Just, just gonna throw that out there. Oh, girl, well, sure, sure. Um, I but Rose literally bleeding out of his abdomen. <laughs> yeah, I know, but he he actually blitzed. He cooked Finn, bro. He cooked. Well, Finn, Finn isn't even force sensitive. Oh, sure, yeah. I that's that's well, yeah, he kind of is. We don't, don't know, know dude. Yeah, no, we, we never don't really know. That like, I don't think the director knows either. They were trying to jump nah, no But I'm just saying, <laughs> if he coached Finn like that, then he should have been able to, to at least, you know. I understand your point, Aaron, that's because a, he should that's another reason to, like, he cut her in the wrist or like poke her in the thigh or something like that. Like I, his spine cut, like all Aaron, up and down. Hold his on, back, let me say one I mean. thing. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, the the reason I can justify him not doing much against Ray is like. Bro had done so much leading up to that. The whole movie was... They spent so much time foreshadowing how powerful that bowcaster was. It was like was, knocking stormtroopers 20 feet back in the air type shit. Yeah. And Bro gets that's shot with that in the gut. And then fights... <laughs> that's, that's run, runs facts. across like fucking miles to go stop them. He was and very emotional too. He Finn. killed his dad. He's, which was... He's yes. very emotionally shattered and injured. Yes. So right, right, right. that is... I don't like the, those reasons, honestly, but it's good enough to make a slide just barely. <laughs> it, right. it is good enough to make a slide just barely. I agree. But they I, weren't good I, reasons. I, will, I don't think they I were actually really good reasons, but they. Uh, and it, it's fine, whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I th- there is agree. a concern though. I, I totally forgot that the bowcaster was being like <clears throat> glazed as so, much as it was throughout the whole film. I, I just, I will, I stand by the fact that I think Rey is just such a poorly written character. She doesn't, like, it, she is just good at everything. There's no yeah. learning. She doesn't learn, okay, Jack. Well, I, I think she bar- she doesn't even really get the chance to learn in this movie, but I understand what you're saying. Um, we can talk more about Rey in the next Well, movies. this is, I want to bring this up because it, the stuff Aaron's talking about, uh, mm. this is like the first seeds that cause a lot of problems in the show because yeah. they're they're reworking the way the force works, uh, how lethal 
weapons are, like lightsabers um, and blasters. Um, this is where, like, this show, these are the kind of things you think about, like, weeks after watching it. Like, I like this yeah. show a lot, this movie a lot more the first when I saw it. Um, and then you start thinking about it, and the show feels like fool's gold. It, it is fool's gold. It's way better on the surface. Then you start just dissecting small things like that, and it gets way worse. Um, like a lot of Disney Star Wars, people are getting chopped up by lightsabers and living, getting stabbed, being shot. It doesn't make any sense because uh, beforehand, a lightsaber wound was very, very dangerous. Um, right. Yeah. And getting shot by blasters because yeah. it, they're lasers. They they melt your insides and like, mm -hmm. blow you up and stuff. Um, and there's a lot of really small things. Like, for example, that blaster, uh, Jewie's... Um, Chewy. Chewy yeah, I call him Chewy, Ooh. okay? Chewy. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, Wait, how did that start? I forgot about that. Uh, I forgot about it, too. <laughs> until I just think now. that was when we were playing the Lego game, wasn't it? Chewy. Until just uh, now. I named my dog that, Chewy. Oh, Siri just turned Chewy. on after Siri turned on after saying <laughs> Chewy. Oh, my God. That's, <laughs> That's hilarious. No, go away, Siri. Go on. Go on. Um, yeah, yeah. Who shot that? Han Solo? Han Solo Chewy. shouldn't have been able to shoot that. Oh, oh yeah, that's no, right. Chewy, Chewy shot it. That. Someone else shot it, though. Someone picked up his bow and shot it. Who did that? Was that in this movie? Dude, I think Han asked if he could try it out, maybe. Is that what happened? I don't like, know if it's just... But th this this, this was an example of the inconsistencies. Because technically, a human shouldn't be able to shoot Chewbacca's bow. Uh, bow gun. Because it has extreme recoil. It was meant for Wookiees to use. That's why it's so powerful. Because they could shoot it and not fly back. Um, mm -hmm. It would fly out your hands and hit you in the face if uh, right. someone shot it. So things like that. Um, also, too, the force is starting to be treated more like a superpower. Um, and I do understand Aaron's concern with... I, I think Ray should have lost that fight, too. Because um, a Jedi... like before, before these movies, a Jedi would go to a temple and learn for years uh, how to wield the force. Even if they were super powerful in it, it was a very difficult thing to train. And same with lightsaber combat. You're just not good at that, right? Um, yeah. I'm a martial artist with like people that are watching in the background. Uh, experience determines how good you are, uh, like through and through. So mm -hmm. if you're someone that's never picked up a sword before, um, you're going to lose to someone that has been using a sword for years and doing it very vigorously. Even if they're tired or hurt, they're just going to know techniques to uh, keep you back and do what they need to do. Obviously, it might not have been, I guess, really well cinematic like that, right? It would be kind of boring. Mm -hmm. But uh, those are real problems, um, which kind of leads into the whole... We'll get back to that, into that in the other two movies with uh, right. Ray being way too talented um, and having no training in the background. I just want yeah, to give I, that I spiel. Totally... Uh, this is why people don't like... These reasons why people don't like it. Um, another thing, too, the they set up a lot of cool characters, but... The core of this is a little flawed. I noticed some people too, because um, it kind of undoes the whole chosen one thing with Anakin Skywalker. Obviously, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Why the hell is there like another Death Star after like 20, 30 years? Um, yeah, the whole thing is a little shaky. Like the whole start of it is kind of shaky. It's like, what are they doing? Like undoing. Uh, Just having everything episode else. seven in the first place is kind of yeah. It it kind of goes against canon at least this saga. this setup right like new uh a new emperor and a new darth vader like 30 years later yeah. um mm -hmm. it's but then again in, in legends it's kind of like that in legends too like luke's ki uh, uh han's kids turn evil and stuff like yeah yeah, a couple of them do i know that wasn't george back. lucas um and i i agree with you william that it is kind of flawed from the start but i also don't want to let that kind of like knock the movie down but i, I yeah I, I know that knocks the movie down for a lot of people though which is why i brought it up right right uh, i think it's important to bring these things up too um mm -hmm. but yeah i i i understand what you guys are saying totally mm -hmm. i probably i think that kylo should have beat her too but kylo technically didn't lose like the whole planet started falling apart and they got separated remember yeah that's true you're right he would have yeah. killed her for sure for shizzle um also but... A lot of the problems that many people, all of us included, have with the sequels don't really take place that much in this movie. Um, but Agreed. In, like, if, you, if you're if you like, what I'm trying to do right now, to the best of my ability, is, like, 
completely ignore the rest of the tri- sequels. <laughs> yeah. And just right. take this movie at face value. And if I do that, I'm not seeing a lot of like flaws with it. Like, yeah. Um, with like the 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 ruining of the force and the bowcaster thing. Yeah, it's very subtle it's things. Definitely not. It's very um, subtle things that you that you that you if you look at the other movies, you can be like, oh yeah, I can totally see that how that is brewing. Mm-hmm. But if you just look at this movie as a whole, it hasn't really taken a hold yet. And the real um, the real heresies start in the next film. Yeah. So and that's why I think setting setting it at the low end, uh, bottom of C is very much deserving. I'm throwing mine in C tier too. You actually convinced me, Gabe. I, I was going to put in a D tier, but you convinced me. Uh, probably some good I, points. I agree with everything Gabe said, okay, cool, but I yeah. also. Um, the two biggest things for me are just Ray's character and its incapability to be original. Like I've been harping on that for the past couple months now to to Gabe and William separately outside of this. Just how I fucking despise remakes. I know this is like you know almost almost like going on ten years now here soon, but I'm just so tired of it. I want nothing. I want the people are tired. Again. We want, I want yes. original <laughs> stories again. I want mm-hmm. original stories again. And this just was without political agenda. Mark. This was just, I just it. want good original stories. I don't care about what the fuck the story is. If it's good, it's good. And this was un- unable to do that. And Ray's character was poor quality. But other than that, it's, it's really funny seeing this watching. film with Star Wars watch. Rebels. I have a good and watch. The Clone Wars thing, <laughs> the Ahsoka and Captain oh Clone God. Wars. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, that's where it goes. <clears throat> yeah i do i wasn't i, I like agree game i enjoy it i think this is a good placement i have it below clone wars movie and i have it below <laughs> Pack of the clones but yeah it's no great. you made some really good Anyways. arguments for a game uh i was going to put it in a d tier uh mm-hmm. i totally right with things you said and i think it's much more fair to put it in c tier yeah after hearing yeah, thanks, bro. um all those uh points you brought up right <clears throat> I do think a lot of people tend to lump this movie in with the rest just because of what a dumpster fire the whole trilogy ended up being. But yeah. I remember being a kid and even an adult being like, every time I come back to this movie, it just, you know, it doesn't another, really have another big opportunity that was missed though with this too, killing Han Solo um, was this would have been the perfect, like people throw around the word fan service. Like it's always a bad thing. It's not always a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It can be good. Right. And one of the times it would have been really good to call back to the OGs and the original Star Wars Mm -hmm. um, was to have Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Luke all on the same screen. That was one of the biggest misses in the 21st century. It was very, very sad that that went over these apparently really good directors' heads. Um, (laughs) That's something I'm very, very upset about. Um, Mm -hmm. But obviously, yeah. we know the directors don't really care about Star Wars. They've even admitted yeah. it. They, J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson, and the person who made Obi-Wan 2, I think, all commented that they don't like Star Wars. Um, That's crazy. Which is very irritating, <laughs> obviously. I shouldn't have to I explain just... why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, that's another one thing I want to brought up because I know that's actually another thing yeah. people didn't like about it, too, was killing Han Solo got rid of that, that potential. Right. Right. But anyway, I really could agree with that. But uh, all right, yeah, I'm ready to move on. The Last Jedi. Okay. All right, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Did you guys want me to start this one too, or does does anyone have any? I think Aaron should start. Aaron, I don't think you started with one, have you? I don't know if I have or not. You start, Aaron. I will if you want to. Okay. <laughs> um. So this movie, I think, shines out of all three of them in its visuals. It is such a gorgeous movie, and. <laughs> Not only that, it sounds gorgeous. It sounds be- like just incredible. The the visuals and the and the audio are, are just out of this world. Past that, there's not a lot to like. Um, I will Let's say. Let's start with first the of destruction all, of the Star Wars. Yeah, we all know love. <laughs> the destruction of this is where Star Wars really crumbles into a big pile of ash. No, this is where the fire starts. Yeah, this is where Rogue One will happen. After this movie, it's Ash. It was Rogue um, One, then Episode 7. So, this is where yeah, it really starts yeah. to fall, huh? Yep, exactly. Luke's well, character I think is out of taken any... in the there opening go. scene and, and stomped on. It's stomped on like a damn cigarette butt. <laughs> like he's given this lightsaber that he hasn't seen since fucking he got his hand cut off. 
and he throws it behind him. It's like, dude, that completely in one scene erases everything that this character ever was. You know, it erases any love he had for his father, any care he had for the Jedi Order, any amount of, you know, heroism, any amount of bravery or courage is all wiped away. And to go on through the whole movie, he's the same over and over again, refusing to train Rey for whatever goddamn reason, saying the Jedi are over, I've failed, it's all my fault, there's out of no character. way, there's no hope. It's not Luke Skywalker. Completely out of character. It's not Luke Skywalker. It's Jake Skywalker, I'd like to point out. Um, Jake Sky- <laughs> This is Jake. This Jake, is Jake Skywalker. That's what Mark Hamill said. <laughs> that is exactly what Mark Hamill said, yeah. And I'd like to point out, like, it apparently all stems from him having evil premonitions of Kylo turning to the dark side, and then he attempts to kill Kylo. Yeah. And then from then on, it's like, oh, oh no, what have I done? I'm just going to let Kylo get swooned. Yeah, someone that redeemed Darth Vader going through that didn't make any. It was totally so, out of character. I'd like to point out, he attempted to kill Kylo, and then he just let Kylo turn to the dark side after that because he gave up. He's like, well, whatever. Fuck it. I'm leaving. I'll leave everyone to their duties. Which was so bullshit. And, like, I, I'm just tired of loose character. And then at the yeah, end, it's not- he, like when he shows up to fight Kylo and it's not even him. I think that was in the moment I was oh, like, yeah. Oh my God, that was this is so irritating. Cool. He's using extreme force abilities to do this. But then so, later thinking on it, I'm like, that's so dumb. Like his final doing of good, he couldn't even be there. It's almost like a final fuck you. Yeah, you know I mean? it is. And, um, let me add and, an like, example real quick before you uh, go yeah. too much into the end scene. Um, just so people okay. uh, understand why we feel this way. It, it's We think it's bad story writing because like people learn through time, right? Luke Skywalker is definitely a character that would have learned from his lessons. So he went through all this growth in the original trilogy. And he learned what it means to be a true Jedi by the end of Star Wars 6. Uh, so it doesn't really make any sense for him to start repeating the same mistakes also, too, the Jedi Order, the whole reason why the Jedi Order fell was kind of like ignorance and turning a blind eye to the dark side, um, mm. which he did with Kylo Ren. And all that doesn't really make any make any sense. It's poor story writing because uh, he like what did he not do? Learn from his lessons? Did he forget everything to learn from Yoda, Obi-Wan, uh, everything on how the Jedi Order fell? Um, he redeemed Darth Vader, which is an impossible task. Ahsoka couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Obi-Wan couldn't do it. It took his son to do it. Um, and that's why we have an issue with this. Uh, it's just not good story yeah. writing. It's so <clears throat> beautiful. It's out of character. Luke, it is so out of character. <clears throat> like, the way you said that, like, Ahsoka, who had this... Ahsoka, who was the reason for Luke's... Do- like, for Luke turning to the dark side, her leaving the Jedi Order. Anakin. And Obi-Wan, who was his, you know, father figure, couldn't do anything. It, it took this you know, figure of hope <clears throat> his son to do it. And for him to just like have a bad dream and that's it. Like that's game. Bro's cooked after a nightmare is just depressing. And yeah. not to mention moving <clears throat> on past Luke. Uh, well actually it's, since we're on the topic of Luke all um, over the place. Do we yeah. want to stay on it? This Luke's a really, really big part of this movie. Do we want to stay on that topic? Yeah. And then move to yeah, another parts I, movie? Because I think Gabe has yeah, yeah you have stuff to say on Luke, I assume. I've got a couple <clears throat> things to say. I, I, I mean, I kind of got, yeah, here. Um, because I know you, a lot of this I want to tell the audience yeah. this real quick. Um, yeah. Gabe is a huge Luke Skywalker fan. Um, yeah, he's yeah, someone that represents like, uh, there's a lot of people out there that really looked up Luke Skywalker and looked at him, uh, uh, as like a role model, like you said earlier. I wasn't one of those people. Um, and I sympathize for Luke a lot more after talking to you and right. kind of had my eyes open to people that. I kind of forget how much people like Luke Skywalker. I was, I was a Clone Wars yeah. guy. Like Clone Wars really kept me into Star Wars. And I got into like Captain Rex and Ahsoka. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm not emotionally attached to Luke Skywalker like you are. At least right. I used to not be. Right. Um, so I know this really sucked probably for people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like uh, you. No, yeah. You thanks for theory. saying that, dude. Because definitely being a kid. Luke and Anakin were always the ones that I look up to, looked up to the most. Luke definitely kept a level head on my shoulders, and I 
I definitely looked up to him a lot, not even throughout my childhood, but my adulthood as well. So yeah, um, <laughs> with that being said, just kind of doubling down on what Aaron said. Uh, Aaron was talking about a lot of specifics that were very bo- uh, bothersome and, you know, they just sucked to see on screen. But uh, yeah, just it was definitely a shock to see such a broken down, uh, fearful, scared version of such a powerful, strong willed character, more strong willed than he even was strong with the force was, you know, that was the thing that me personally, I, you know, looked up to so much with Luke was just his resiliency and his grit, you know, his grit, his ability to withstand the dark side and learn from his mistakes, like William said. Um, so yeah, seeing seeing that character just kind of be reduced to a, uh, I don't even know what to call him, but a little bitch. Some, yeah, <laughs> for lack of better phrasing, definitely. It's a big uh, but, middle finger to Luke Skywalker fans. This whole Luke Skywalker you, is a big and, fuck and you, you to Luke Skywalker yeah. fans. Not even Luke Skywalker fans is to Star Wars fans I mean, in general. Just to Star Wars fans, because you you can tell with the movie that this guy Ryan Johnson wanted to piss he people off. He the, wanted to make people it? angry. He wanted to he wanted to be divisive. Is that the word? He admitted to wanting to make a movie like he, he wanted to just crumble the mythology that Star Wars has spent so much time building, and that J.J. Abrams tried his best to honestly Fix it, keep but... up you know and just 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 he wanted he he did his best to uh glorify what star wars is and and he wanted they just to be completely, divisive. he they completely handed the reins over to ryan johnson yeah it's not even their and, fault it's the creative department's fault for giving the director giving full, full creative control. control when they have a like when you have a trilogy in a franchise like star wars you need to have a creative department keeping right. things in check Right, you can't but just yeah. give it all to the director. You can't just go YOLO and throw spaghetti at the wall for each movie, which which they kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to point out. Um, oh shit, it's lost um, me. Real oh, quick, I'd like to point out. Oh yeah, go ahead, Gabe. Um, yes, seeing Luke uh, just lose all hopes and dreams because of a, a vision is very frustrating. How to um, character? Yeah, let me guys or let me know when you guys want to move on. I, I kind of want to. I do have one other point to bring up um, with Luke Skywalker that I forgot about. Another really huge flaw from the previous movie, um, uh, Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. Uh, Luke Skywalker goes into hiding, right? I don't... So I haven't watched these movies in a while now. um, But I kind of forget why he goes into hiding. I, I know part of it's to raise a new Jedi Order, but I guess like he thought he failed, so he... Kind of fell off the yeah, uh, play, face of the I galaxy. Was, I don't think yeah, there was. I don't a think reason the Force given. Force Awakens cleared it up. He didn't yeah, want people to find one. him. He wanted to go hide. Oh, oh, right. I remember what it is. So, okay, this is the whole thing. He goes off to train new Jedi, right? And he wants to do it in isolation, but he leaves a map for his location for people to come and find him if the galaxy needs him again. They go there to go find him, and he doesn't want to help anybody. Another huge problem with uh, That's crazy. the storytelling. Yeah, I didn't even writing. think of that. That's insane. <laughs> that is crazy. So, I forgot about that too. <laughs> I'd like to point out one more thing about Luke before we move on to the rest of this movie. Um, I'd like to call back to our last tier list with Uncle Iroh, with what William said. If he's like this idea, he's like this perfect vision of masculinity. I kind of see that in Luke as well. And what in Luke in episode six, that is, he's like this, you know, everything that you want to be, he's everything that you can look up to in a person is that version of Luke. He's loving and caring and accepting and he's strong and he's brave and he's courageous, you know? Um, and then for everything, every one of those aspects that I just listed are completely flipped on their head in this movie. And it's kind of like, it's just kind of hurtful. It really hurts to see that um because it's there's no real reason for those aspects to go away like a- attributes to a person don't just leave you like that do you know what i mean you make a mistake and if you are a person like luke is you you don't change who you are 
you know, you yeah, he should have gotten better. It. Like he should have been fix those it. traits even exactly. amplified at this time in the, in the exactly. In the, in the I hundred percent agree. It's like this is not an eligible excuse for for the way they changed his character, and it's it's just it hurts. You know, it sucks. It's really yeah. bullshit. They they set it up almost but, like uh, Luke redeemed Darth Vader, and now it's Ray's turn to redeem Luke. No, really, like yeah, makes me want to. <laughs> so this also too, I people listen to this that. like. I think only Star Wars fans would watch this, but if you're not if you're not like super hardcore Star Wars fan, you're here. Oh, thank you for being here. Um, we yeah, would understand yeah, why yeah, people would put much. this in a higher ranking without all the context for stuff like Luke Skywalker. Of course. Um, um, this, if this movie like wasn't to... a Star Wars movie, it would have been pretty cool. But this is a big reason why people hate this movie, specifically Star Wars fans, is because of Luke Skywalker, for example, and how they handled him. Even Mark oh. Hamill, uh, after the movie came out, Tons of clips of him talking about or hinting at um, that the Luke wasn't going to be good. And then after it came out, he talked about it all the time. He was like, yeah, this was not Luke Skywalker. He tried to tell Ryan Johnson that this is not going to work. People aren't going to like this. Um, but he didn't listen to him. He basically gave him the middle finger. Mm -hmm. um, I'm ready to move on to the rest of the movie if you guys are. Yeah. I uh, So, yeah, just to give... I got, We spent so much time on Luke, which is the main disappointment in this movie but i'll i'll yeah. do a little recap on the whole movie i think there was a lot of interesting ideas that ryan johnson had otherwise i think that the uh having the rebel alliance reduced to a couple of ships being hunted down by the first order was kind mm -hmm. of an intriguing thing having them i, I you know have to agree with that have having to think on their toes you know having them really be pressed for you know a way out mm -hmm. uh it was also I a also... good opportunity to let us uh see uh this side of poe that was kind of neat uh -huh. i liked seeing uh -huh. him be totally fed up with the girl with the purple hair i don't know her name but she was <laughs> i i love her seeing existence his, like, people up. <laughs> yeah i love seeing his urgency um it added a lot to his character that i think didn't uh, I have agree. a lot of meat and bones in uh the first one so it was we neat completely... to see it was we neat to see Poe's. Yeah, no, he didn't really have a big part. But anyways, yeah, I want to finish this by saying it was neat to see him kind of come into his own character. Uh, he was definitely a strong point in this movie. Um, mm -hmm. I, I it was, agree with that. Uh, going and in, moving into the casino part, Got it's obviously fight. just it's obviously just one full, one big massive. I don't know what you want to call it. It was uh, a waste of time, is what that was. It was a it, it was big a big waste of time. They ruined a political ruined... statement that they brought into Star Wars. Oh, capitalism! Capitalism is bad. Casinos are bad. Animal cruelty, things that you don't really want to see. I, I understand whatever they want to make a statement, but like when you're going to Star Wars to escape from real life, the last thing you want to be reminded of is something that is a problem in real life. And you don't want to bring yeah. politics and personal interest into a, a property like Star Wars. At, at least, least show a solution divisive. if you want to do that, right? They never show a solution yeah. to these things. They just say, oh, yeah, this exists. It's like, thanks. Right. And Poe's character was boiled, like, mm. ruined because of this, too. Like, this is what his character was used for. Or not Poe, um, Finn. Finn. Uh, Finn. Yeah, so um, hearkening back to my uh, compliment to Finn's character at the beginning, saying they set him up really well, like yeah. William said, <laughs> they didn't do anything with this. They reduced him to this very subpar plot line and didn't move his character forward at all. I'm going to say the same thing with Rey. Her character was not moved forward as, at all. Same thing with Kylo Ren. His character was not moved forward of, as, um, at all. This big, giant, exciting part of Episode 7, which was Snoke, his head was literally cut off, just cutting off the whole... With his head came off the fucking you mean wheels of this franchise or whatever oh happened yeah to him. i don't even remember i he can got, say uh, with his death that was the end of the franchise because jj abrams set up ryan johnson and uh, he set him up to be able to tell an intriguing story which he just he left ryan was like at nah. the end of this he literally killed do what i want off. because my ego is too big um, for everybody watch nothing i'd like to add a little bit to that uh i think kylo's character definitely had potential at the end of this movie like he chose to kill snoke and you're right kylo was betray not betray that and then he point. was like yeah 
Uh, of course. And that's yeah. Um and then he was like, Ray, join me and together we can rule the galaxy as one type shit. Which yeah, I he think was trying to do something me. interesting. And then mm-hmm. Ray was like, No. And then Kylo was kind of built up to be this like really evil big bad guy. Like he was the new big bad superpower, which was the first tweak in the original trilogy that was actually or like, you know, because they were following that same formula of the original trilogy. You have Snoke, Kylo, Ray, la la la. Kylo now becoming the new big bad is first tweak that was like, oh shit, this could be interesting. This could lead to something kind of neat. Uh, no, it doesn't. But it, it was kind of a cool ending. And I think that was, it leads it was, yeah. to a potential like scary character in Kylo. Like he could come back in the new movie, the next movie with the new outfit, a new mindset. Fuck, fuck. Like he's evil, evil, like ready to fuck shit up. He already killed his dad. He's killed his master, which is exactly Honestly? the, the you know the plot line for a Sith Lord. They always kill their their master, right? Which was kind of neat. Yeah. And I'd like to say as well, back to Canto Bite, the end credit scene was that child force pulling the uh, broom to his hand. I forgot about that. That's it. That's all we get. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. No more Canto um, Bite. No more kid. Yeah. No more force. Yeah, we That's didn't get anything in the next movie. Like, I, it that. Leads I thought that was like, build- oh, I thought shit. that was building something up. Maybe this yeah. Kid, yeah, maybe this, maybe this kid's gonna have a big part in the next movie. Maybe there's gonna be a time skip. Maybe you know, and Kylo's really evil now. Oh shit! What? Yeah, all the uh, fan theories I, were better than what we ended up getting. <laughs> yeah, that's. I want to say. I, um, yeah, I get. Kylo in general is probably the only consistency in all three of these movies. Actually, the only good oh, character in, yes. in which I don't really yes. have a problem with because. I Not agree. to get into Rise of Skywalker yet, um, although we should probably go there. Um, yeah. Kylo's character kind of doesn't really have a negative arc. I think they actually do a, well, a good job with him. I don't know how he survived this dumpster fire of a series, but... Yeah. I don't know either, but he did. Yeah, he did his a good job handling arc it all. Wasn't even... I thought it was it was all right, too. It was, it, yeah. It was decent. Um, but, I do want to... Do we want to bring up Princess Leia? Real quick, is she's oh, kind of the important oh, yeah. part of the film as well. I actually had well. something to say. Sorry, um, if you guys don't mind. Having heard the film was really say, cool. Her using the force though was kind of weird. I think the way weird. she used the force was very silly, but I think it was cool that she was like comical. put into a coma comical. for a while, and then the <laughs> resistance were like, "Oh shit, we've lost our leader. We're out of fuel. Um, the the people, the what are they called? The First Order are right on our tail." We don't have anyone to lead us. So there's no morale. It, it was, was definitely neat. a cool setup. It was and dramatic and exciting. Up, yeah. Up, yeah, exactly. It brought up that, you know, what Gabe mentioned with Poe and the purple haired lady and they butted heads. And then, you know, what happened, happened. Um, I think it was right. cool because without Leia going into her um, coma, it, that wouldn't have happened. And it, it added a lot more interest and a lot more tension to the film than there wouldn't have been otherwise. Also, I would like to say Leia throughout this these three movies is very static and a little disappointing. Agreed. Yeah, there was... See, if this wasn't really a Star Wars movie, or if maybe Ryan Ryan Johnson starred with the first movie and built his own thing, this probably would have been a lot better. He clearly wanted yeah, to do agreed. his own thing, and I, I, I get that. Um, and this movie had so much potential to be good, but because of what was set up beforehand. Um, and also, too, his 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 twist on Luke Skywalker was very mean. Um, mm, disrespectful. Poor. poor. Uh, I do want to bring up. You reminded me something, Aaron, with the, the rebels. Um, mm-hmm. So, the Republic's been reestablished. So, why do rebels even exist to begin with? It doesn't make any sense. So, that's another big thing with the story writing. People don't like, uh, like Star Wars fans that follow the lore really closely. Uh, mm-hmm. This whole, th- this, this, this whole plot, this whole setting, doesn't make any sense because the Republic is reestablished after the fall of the Empire. Um, so anything Leia should, if she's a leader of something, it would be like she's the chancellor or something, or like has a like she's a, one of yeah. the higher seats in the Council of the Republic. I believe, um, yeah, because what the Republic was still a thing until the seventh movie, and then the the new Death Star destroyed. Yeah, I guess they destroyed the it. That the Republic uh, was on. I think it didn't make any happened. sense, but I want to run that out there too. A uh, lot of weird yeah. storytelling uh, points, choreography too. Um, it was pretty on the surface. 
But if you dissect it, it was actually pretty bad. Lots of people in the oh background just kind of spinning in 360s, not doing anything. Um, uh-huh. The way the forest works um, gets amplified. The flaws uh, or how they clearly show the forest shouldn't work. Um, like it's treated more like a superpower rather than the, than a, this mystical uh, thing. You must spend time re- like to wield the force. Right. You have to really discover yourself. That's why it takes years to um, figure it out. And it's more of a superpower right. in this, which people don't like. I agree. I mean, Luke died from using the force too hard to use the force projection. It was really (laughs) stupid. Yeah, that was terrible. He should have just gone to the planet. But after everything we've talked about, I think I'm going to just toss this uh, in cringe tier. Yeah, me too. I can't. I I was putting it in D tier originally, but yeah, it's it's cringe. It's not good. It's just not good. My plan was also putting it in D tier. My plan was also to put it in D tier, but it's just, yeah. If it wasn't a Star Wars movie. It would have been yeah. a lot better, but it's a Star Wars yeah, movie. Yeah. It's a Star Wars movie, and it's a terrible one. So, here's my thing. I like it about a hundred times more than both Boba Fett and Rise of Skywalker. And there are more positives to this movie than I really saw before talking about it. Like, I love Kylo's character development. I love the visuals, and I love the audio. And I love what they did with Poe. And the whole resistance thing was kind of neat, but so not enough to move I'm the detail for edge. me. Like, but it's like I said, with the, the, the setting, bad batch, the setting doesn't make sense to begin with. It's the problem, like, I, like with the resistance stuff. I, I almost want to make like a new tier, like, just yeah. it. but I'm going to yeah. keep it at the top of my cringe tier for now. I'm throwing it in just because uh, Boba Fett and the next one are both. Mine is also followers. going in cringe and I will start us off with. The Rise of Skywalker. It's at the very bottom of my list. I think it's without a doubt the worst Star Wars movie and the worst medium of Star Wars ever made. It's uh, one of the worst movies ever made. It's not even a good movie outside of Star Wars. This is like yeah. The last I'm gonna give a quick movie. sum up, um, and then you guys we can uh, give your thoughts so we can kind of get through this one a little bit faster. Yeah, we but... might not. Uh, yeah, we'll go through this a little faster. But there's people have made like yeah. four hour long videos dissecting every part of this yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you want to go charge with it either, um, you go watch those um if you want to have really in depth so we'll just give our overviews on why we don't yeah. um really yeah, like we'll, it we'll direct you we'll direct you over to uh star wars theory for more <laughs> yeah. information on this movie okay Anyways, so game. um yeah uh i think this movie is a complete dumpster fire i think they're scrambling at every opportunity they could possibly have made for themselves to clean up quote unquote the mess of the last jedi they knew that fandom was in shambles they knew everybody was angry they wanted to put as much fan service and in, in this movie as they possibly could which is why they brought out brought back emperor palpatine which was oh, the worst mistake in cinema history and makes me sick Somehow. just talking about it um other than that they also uh the end of this movie is incredibly cringe the only thing that was slightly riveting was having kylo turn to the good side it was kind of neat to see a different side of him that you always knew was there um, but seeing Rey just single-handedly take on the Emperor with the voices of all the other Jedi we know and love in her head was um, something that just shouldn't have existed in the first place, especially on this random-ass planet that was only able to be found with this dagger on this random-ass planet that was only to be found from Lando, and Rey was... Hey, don't forget about Rey, the crashed uh, Death Star. Rey, Ray was force healing people and Chewbacca died, but he wasn't really dead. Oh, and I then Ray will oh, wait, Ray's the Palpatine's daughter. Wait, what? Oh, wait, no, granddaughter. Oh, she's powerful. Okay. Han Solo's back. Wait, no, he's just a vision. Luke Skywalker has <laughs> changed his mind again and he's now totally the cool. With her going to the dark side in the trailer. Yeah, that was total shit. Oh um, my god, that was. Oh, this crazy. this movie is a poor poor attempt at redemption to the last jedi and it's a it turns out and just to be kind of a bionicle or or a transform <laughs> transformer fans characters a, like nothing at this of, point <laughs> yeah it's just he's going around just, is now he's like i need to tell drunk. you something 30 minutes later yeah, he says, tell you something. i need to tell you something the and we never know what he movie. says we never figure it out they never tell us this <laughs> movie is just it's just a very bad movie. poorly made, and I feel bad for the people that no made story it, in this movie because I know like, they're capable of better. But yeah, they were just driven. They were driven. You by, tell they didn't care. They were driven by fear. Um, <laughs> yeah, fear. Anger towards the last movie. 
Because it feels like there's like a back right. and forth going on. JJ Abrams makes the first movie. Yes. Sorry, yeah, I don't uh, I don't JJ really have a whole lot to say. I don't want to get movie. into it too much on my end. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get into it too much either because, you know, it's going to get real emotionally. It's obvious why this movie is bad. Uh, it's but bad for Star Wars. It's a bad movie. Uh, the first movie is made by J.J. Abrams. Ryan Johnson makes the second movie. It's completely different. F- like, you know, throws away everything that the first movie makes. And then they give it back to J.J. Abrams. And he's like, OK, fuck you. I'm going to do that. Do the same thing. Yeah, it was like so a tug of like war were, between just, them. Yeah, it was a tug of war. Like, it was they really weird. <laughs> focusing on what they were making instead we can see clearly they weren't focusing on what they were making by the fact that Finn has something to say the whole damn movie and yeah. there was nothing at all uh, to be said. And Finn is now like getting premonitions of Ray, of Ray's like well-being. Ray, Ray, she's hurt. Like that's his favorite word is, is Ray. He's just screaming Ray the whole damn movie. Um, Lando comes in at the end with, the entire galaxy on his heels. Uh, yeah, it's bullshit. I'm, yeah. I, I don't the, want to talk about it anymore. I'll bring up like one little thing. Um, because again, there are people that watched this that liked it that are very big back. Star Wars fans. Um, although, it is a bad movie. Like, it, it's cool. It's nice to watch. It's fun. But like, I mean, we all like bad movies, right? So I can see if you like it just because of the effects and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, the effects agreed. and the visuals are incredible but too. The storytelling is terrible. But what it does for the lore, too, is very horrible. At this point, the Force can just be anything you imagine it to be. Um, the Force heal with Rey undoes a lot of things. Like, why doesn't Anakin get Force healed when he was burning up? Why didn't Qui-Gon Jinn get Force healed when he was stabbed to his stomach? Um, that's that's the main thing, really. Yeah. Um, the teleportation like ability to... with through the Force. Uh, things like that. Mm, yeah, that too. Uh, also, I'd too, like, like to say... the realism's not there. Um, oh, you go ahead. I was just going to say, I think a better plot line was that Snoke was secretly Jar Jar Banks the whole time. And I'm not even joking <laughs> when I say that. Like That, that would have been, been really so cool. cool. Like, that would have been the best Banks thing they could have done to fix time. this, honestly. That's what he's been doing. Like That's why he was pissing everybody off. He was just that would have like, been better than this. It was all just a front. <laughs> that's how he fooled the Jedi. He made them think it he was, was just Jar a dumbass. Like, th- I'm oh. not even joking when I say that would have been a lot cooler. Honestly, Jar Jar, but... like, they, they trying to say maybe like Jar Jar was actually my control and Palpatine the whole time as a cover up. Would have been better than what they did. That's maybe, maybe, saying, yeah. maybe they'll do that Somehow, with the new Palpatine Ray. returned. Maybe they'll do oh that God. with the new Ray movie. <laughs> I forgot about that. They are doing a Ray movie. Oh, right they there. are. I thought they dropped that. No, nope, it's happening. Yeah. Oh. That's crazy. See, here's the thing. Like, okay, we didn't get a good Ray, right? No character development. Um, you say something good. Also, or do you want to wrap it up? I think yeah. I'm ready to wrap, wrap it up when you are. Uh, I'm Me too. I'll stop. This oh, do you guys want to rank? Final thing to say. Oh God! At the end of the movie, when Ray renounces her name as Palpatine and says she's Ray Skywalker, that goes against everything Man, Anakin I forgot about that. ever fought for. Like it increases the amount of fear that the name Palpatine brings throughout the universe, the galaxy. And I forgot about just, that. You know, that's crazy. Adds onto it, and I think that's bullshit for her character. What they wanted her character to be, character to be, and for Luke and for Anakin. Anyways, it just would have. They would have. It, it no more. It would have been so hard if she said things. Ray um, Palpatine. Yeah, that like, would have been fucking badass, honestly. Uh, as as that would have been, been cooler. Been cool. Uh, a review. I think we're. You actually ever seen a guy who made a review that said that would have been better, right? Um, uh, saying like, "Oh, we're changing Palpatine's." He was like, "Ah, now I am. Uh, I'm going to change the Palpatine name to be good." It would have been cooler than taking the name of Skywalker. That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. But, um. It was bullshit. But yeah, that would, have, it, that would have completely erased everything Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine stood for. You know, it, he would have been rolling in his grave hearing Ray do good things under his name. Yeah, and that would have been better. And Anakin than and Luke proud instead of c- increasing the amount of fear of Palpatine's name. Just read Harry Potter, you know. Talk about Ahsoka for a second. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was going to ask you guys. Ahsoka. I, have, I haven't I watched, watched Ahsoka. Um, yeah, so they're going to review it. Uh, There's kind of a trend going on. Or if you guys haven't realized already i haven't watched season three mando i haven't watched ahsoka um after obi-wan and boba fett i was kind of like done with star wars for a little bit so i haven't gotten caught up with the recent stuff right. even the stuff that's probably kind of decent like bad batch and the count dooku ahsoka i've just been burnt out <laughs> right um so, so yeah, i watched all of ahsoka besides the last episode i'm i genuinely apologize i probably should have watched that before we made this but 
Um, I I liked Ahsoka, honestly. I thought that they were going in an interesting direction. I like okay. that it kind of connected with Ezra um, and called back to Rebels. Um, mm-hmm. It was neat to see Thrawn again. Um, mm-hmm. It was uh, also obviously cool to see the callback to the Clone Wars and to see a renewed and very uh, full circle version of Anakin Skywalker and Hayden Christensen. Uh, also, Rosario Dawson does a pretty good job at an older Ahsoka. I do like that casting. Um, it's neat. Uh, do I think it's needed? Not necessarily. But I also didn't watch the last episode, so I don't really want to put it above C tier. Um, it's going to be a solid C tier for me. And if the last episode's really good, which I will get back to you in the comment section, uh, maybe it moves to D, uh, B tier or even A tier. I don't know. Probably not A tier, actually. But uh, I'm going to toss it in like C tier. To uh i had a good time with it it wasn't it wasn't bad okay but i'd like to ask how captain rex was captain rex was barely in it yeah it was sure he, was just, he was just like uh, in the background like saying he said some shit to ahsoka but it was cool what? yeah okay. yeah sad. Okay. yeah a little, a little sad but we'll have to see for our own I saw um, the first two episodes. but yeah i thought the villain also, was neat i i did like game. the uh i forgot his name the guy with the red lightsaber though he was cool <clears throat> He was oh, yeah, a good like gray-haired guy. Okay, but yeah. I have to ask. Uh, um, didn't they change the way the Force works? Like, didn't the Mandalorian girl? She's now Force sensitive. She like learned how to use the Force. Who's the Mandalorian girl? Remind me. I don't know her name, bro. She's got like the. She's in Rebels. She's got the Mandalorian armor. Oh well, didn't that get changed in Rebels? Wasn't she able to like use the Force? I don't in Rebels? think so. Uh, I didn't think so. I'm pretty sure Ahsoka confirmed it. Like, Isn't that Sabine? To use the force. Yeah, she doesn't... Sabine Ren? It wasn't confirmed, and then they... Yeah, Sabine, I don't yeah. think she did she use the force. Right. She was assumed to not have the force in Rebels, and then I think they changed it for the story for her to have the force. Yeah, All right, well, maybe, she, like, maybe, maybe they did. I don't know. But I know they changed it so that the force can now be learned. Like, that was a big thing. Like, that's confirmed now. Which I don't have a problem with, It's but... No, that's fucking... Something to, I do have a problem with that. I do too. <laughs> it's okay. especially if it's easy to learn. Because here's the issue: Disney Star Wars. Okay, well that's the, different. It that's doesn't take you don't like you don't have to um, go to a temple and master like unlock all nine chakras. That takes like 15 years to use the force. You can just start flying your hands around, and all of a sudden you have the force. Well, that's completely different. If you can do that, then it's the dumbest existence known to yeah. man. And that's how it is <laughs> something in like this universe with with Ray and uh, I guess her too. Okay. Well, if if it's been confirmed that the force can be something that you develop over time with like hard hard work ethic and like extreme discipline, I think that'd be kind of neat. Like it'd be a really cool. Um, well, that's how people really thought it was before the Mandalorian like, count was thrown in there. But comes, I think it like it pull it just change into it, like i don't know it i guess it too takes much. it out of the fact that it's like you're undoing escape, everything but it also you're, you're literally undoing lines in the movies like oh yeah i made a chlorine count it, it can't do yeah. that it's annoying yeah i'm not down for that honestly it just changes too much it, just make a new show make a new fucking yeah universe. make it make a new space space wizard franchise if you want to change things that much yeah yeah anyways um Here's our list. It obviously took a long time to get here. Uh, whew, it's been a long ride. We obviously have a deep passion for Star Wars. There's been a lot of controversy and a lot of uh, interesting things happening. So there was definitely a lot of us to, or a lot for us to talk about. Let us know what you guys think of our lists. Uh, are you guys satisfied with your lists? I am. Yeah, I'll share it with you guys. I don't quite know exactly where all you guys' points are. So after the recording, we'll yeah. screenshot here and show it to you guys. 